Hey, hi, and welcome in, everybody. It is Friday, September 3rd. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards. This is the bottom line here on Woodward Sports Network. Braylon, how are you, my friend? Big show today. We made it. It is Friday. It's Friday, man. Like, I, I commend you. You've had a very long week. Oh, man, it's I'm, all good. But you got, you're got looking good. I, I stayed up. So, so excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, watching the show. We appreciate you at home in your car if you're listening to the Woodward Sports app. We really appreciate you. If I look a little tired, it is because I am a true friend and a true loyalist when it comes to the people that I care about and I love. I stayed up on accident, kind of, <laughs> to watch my man, Ryan Armani, 4 a.m. on Fox. Braylon, I will sleep I when I... Braylon, I, for you, I will sleep when I'm dead, my friend. Let's get right I'm to it. I'm almost dead. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Welcome to the party. Uh, I will sleep when I'm dead. I'm telling you, I agree with him. Hey, I'm excited, man. I, I, I got to get one thing out of the way. And, and we've got a pleasure to be joined yeah. by our guy, Marcus Ray, in studio Ooh, today. This big is very bro. big. Right, we got some I mean, stories to Marcus talk about. Ray is, is one of the best. Marcus, I, I'm so thrilled that you are in studio. Yeah. But I got something to say at the start of the show real quick. Okay. So you walked out of the meeting a little bit, showing Marcus around here, and Maz says, Maz says, hey, I think Braylon's mad at me. Why? And I said, why, why would I be I mad said, at look, Maz? I said, look, I said, what are you talking about, Maz? She said, yeah, I think Braylon's mad at me. What are you talking and about? And I said, Maz, quit being silly. Braylon is not mad at you. And, and he's like, yeah, I could feel it. He's mad at are, me. Are we doing a man chill out already? <laughs> At, at, in this, in the second minute of our show, Maz, I love you. No one's mad at you. All right. What are you talking about? Okay. You're my guy. Okay. All right. Now I'm not he, mad at you. Now what he's gonna do is when the show's over, he's looking at me. He's biting his lip right now. He's like, <laughs> he can't oh, wait. Man. He, 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 can, he can't wait to get at. He you. cannot wait to get a hold of me. Today. Yeah, not he, at all. You know, not he, at all. He ignored my phone call, and you know, but there it is. See, he ignored my phone call and hey. sent and sent some tweets and and sent some text to the group chat. <laughs> He didn't respond to my talk. My phone I was call. on the toilet. I was on the toilet. I don't want to talk to you when I'm on the toilet. That's tough. Oh, That's tough. I love I, it. I, I'll give you a pass for that because he did call me back at 10:46 p.m. Okay. But I was. I forgot. I was dialed into the Ohio State right. Minnesota game, which we'll talk about. Marcus, right, you want to talk to him if you were on the toilet? <laughs> uh, I sure would. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like I'm FaceTiming. <laughs> Is that great or Talk what? to me in between grunts. <laughs> oh, man. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the feud between Maz and Braylon. Uh, it's, it's heating up. <laughs> it, apparently, it's heating up. Co coming up in just a little bit. Well, we want to get to the man of the hour We're right done. now. We've got him yeah. uh, in studio with us. 1997 national champ. One of, the, one of the greatest defensive players ever to play in Michigan football no, history. No, 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 no. In the Big Ten. In the Big ever. Ten, in the Big ever. Ten, number twenty nine. Oh, Appreciate man. that love. No. Yeah. Can can we see some of these photos too? If you're watching on YouTube, if we're watching on Twitter, we got uh, some video, we've some got photo. some great photos. Look at this guy! For, oh, look oh. at this guy! G <laughs> GQ Sw Rico Suave. That's my rookie year on BT. <laughs> Straight milk dud head. <laughs> oh man! Oh look at Brandon <laughs> Edwards in Western number Michigan. 80? What they, the heck is that? I, I forgot I wore eighty, dude, man. Dude, I forgot like you wore eighty. Ago. That's for sure. He's not an eighty. No, you are not an Crazy 80. thing about it is that is actually post game. That was my first post game interview ever. That's the hell it. with me. Look at that. <laughs> That's this the, shot. This, Look at that. This that was shot, awesome. This shot right here, David Marcus Boston. Ray, in my opinion, is one of the most iconic photos in Michigan football history. I would say Sports when, Illustrated history. When you see that, Marcus, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Just all the stuff Boston talked <laughs> before the game and everything he said when he was on his recruiting visit. But I'm from Columbus, but it really makes me think I was born for this rivalry, just being from Columbus, born in OSU Hospital, and then beating Ohio State three times. So when I see that, it just means my legacy is going to be immortalized forever. First Michigan National Championship since World War II, correct? First Michigan champions, national championship since World War II. David Boston was built like a. I came to play today. He was built like a like a Hercules. David he Boston, was, yeah. you took him down. He was, he was built like an Adonis, yeah. but then he went overboard once he got to Miami and the Cardinals and the NFL. And what I remember about that, like if you look at that Sports Illustrated cover, he's turning upside down, and I think that's what Michigan did. Like that's why it's so iconic to me because it's a metaphor 
on the very low key tip. Mm. Michigan turned the Big Ten upside down. If you remember pre preseason, they didn't get picked to win the Big Ten title. They didn't get picked to finish second in the Big Ten. They didn't pick to be third in the Big Ten. They said, the hell with all that. We're going to beat everybody you put in front of us. And also, we're going to go out to the Rose Bowl and we're going to win the national championship. Like, you know, that, the, that, that cover says it all. Marcus, the thing about that cover, too, I was a freshman uh, that, at Michigan that year. has to be like the greatest freshman year of anybody's life. The football national championship. The hockey team won the national championship. Yeah. It, it was a fantastic year. But David Bossy was talking so much crap that entire week. And the fact that that it was him that went down like that, that was, in my opinion, embarrassed in, in that way on the cover of Sports Illustrated for the entire country to see. It couldn't have happened to a better guy hey, Marcus, than David Boston. Do me a favor. Give us some backstory on his, re his recruiting trip and the whole little thing back and forth with him and somebody you know and somebody was like, oh, hell no. And so give us a little backstory about him and you know who. Well, here's the deal. Charles Woodson, when I look at that play, I also think I, I had to take up for Charles because he put hands on Charles, if you remember. It, oh, yeah, 100%. In, early in that first quarter. But when David Boston came on his visit to Michigan, he walked in there with a red coat on. We were playing Sega Genesis at the time. Sheesh. And David Boston said, hey, uh, I'm not taking off my red coat because I'm going to the Buckeyes. So we kind of stood up. We we're about to fight in the dorm. This is December 95. And he said, I came here for three, women, three reasons, to sleep with your women, to see your stadium and tell Charles Woodson, I'm gonna get it. Get it. I'm gonna give it to him. Are you kidding me? Uh, said it to my I face. Said. So he looked wow. me in the face. He said, "Now go check. Now get on the phone." So we were about to fight. He said, "Didn't you just get back on the team from a credit card so swiping or something you had going on?" So I said, "Well, you know, he's right." He said, "Now call your girlfriend and tell her to come down here." And then Charles came down to what? my room. I told Charles, "Hey, there's some freshmen down. I mean, some recruit down here woofing." And they got nose and nose in the dorm. <laughs> now, that's a little pre-segment from oh, Hitman oh, and Heisman oh. coming out next year. Wow. Just a little excerpt. You, I told you. We got True stories story. for days. That is one that's of the most incredible things I've heard. I, I mean. So, it, now, think about that story. And now, look at that Sports <laughs> Illustrated cover. <laughs> what did Man. he have to say after that? Take that. He apologized. And I saw him three days after that game on uh, Thanksgiving break over D. Miller's house. And we just sat there, you know, had a few beers and just mm -hmm. watched the game. But. He and I are actually pretty cool, and I played against him when he was with Arizona, too, with the Cardinals. That's incredible. Now, he didn't know that that cover was coming out when he was sitting with you. <laughs> no, he didn't know that at the time. <laughs> at the time. Yeah. Hey, uh, Alex, let's play some of this video uh, from Marcus Ray in his days uh, for the Wolverines because it was one of, the, one of the magical periods in Michigan football history, and, and we are – you know, well beyond that, we hope we can get to that at some point again under Jim Harbaugh. But Marcus, uh, the, the season starts for for Michigan tomorrow. It has been an absolutely hell of a haul for Michigan over the last 15 years or so. Just 17. your big picture takeaway on the Michigan Wolverines this season as we embark on a, on a new season here. Well, I think this year's Wolverines, uh, I don't have them winning more than six games. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because I think the schedule is a little too tough. Uh, you know, you have Northwestern, Wisconsin, your usual suspects in the East. You, you know, you play Ohio State last. You never know with the Michigan State game. But I just think Michigan has got to this point through a lack of recruiting. When you look at the high turnover in the coaching staff, and I don't know if they have guys on their staff who can really develop talent. When I was at Michigan, we had Ooh. less miles. We have Vance Bedford, we have Brady Hoke and Greg Madison, and those guys were there for, a, you know, an extended period of time. But when you don't win, you're not going to get the best players. And it's just the way it goes. That's why college football now, it's just like a, it's a monopoly at the top. You check the playoffs, you check the draft, you'll see the same usual suspects. I just think Michigan's a long way away from that. Can I expound on that? Uh, Take your time, man. We talked a little bit the other day. You look kind of fast in some of these highlights, man. I don't remember that speed. I don't remember that speed. <laughs> we talked the other day, um, and it's I, I, it was Brady Quinn, actually. It was. Uh, who mentioned the it. Notre Dame kind of under the hood. Well, yeah, he yeah. talked about under the hood, but he also talked about you see guys now go to the NFL like a quitty pay. Who, ha who was the number one defensive rookie in the NFL preseason this year. Just looked like a beast out there. Trained by my brother, by the way, in the garage. Absolutely. Uh. Didn't, didn't do 
much at Michigan, or at least didn't show that dominance at Michigan. So, like, what was happening in his years at Michigan, and then all of a sudden he gets to the Colts and he's flashing like a beast. Donovan Peoples-Jones Donovan is another Peoples one. Donovan Peoples-Jones is, able to do is, in is Cleveland. another one. We talk right. about all these players that have left Michigan, gone on to the NFL, and have just kind of exploded in their careers and we have we didn't see that explosion when they were at Michigan and that speaks to what you were saying these players haven't been developed yeah and sometimes it's the system that you're playing too I mm. mean you know I look at a guy like Frank Clark I mean he he, he, he was a pretty decent player you know at Michigan for what it's worth and then he had a great workout but when he got to the NFL he became a different person when he got with those Seahawks and under Pete Carroll so sometimes it's system sometimes it's just that players you know the development of that player or who coaches that guy during his tenure at Michigan. I got a fun question. Like, I'm actually, like, I got my brother in the studio, man. Like, Marcus, it's always good to see you, man. I'm you so high on you, man. Like, you know, speak so highly of you. Um, I want to go back a little bit. You know, I want to talk about, you know, Michigan back in the day a little bit and give our fans something to kind of, you know, jump in and, and hear out of your mouth. Uh, you were a huge Michigan fan growing up. Like, in terms of, like, knowing even Big Ten in general, you knew Michigan. You knew Ohio State. You knew Penn State. You're a historian as it relates to that. You know, and when you're looking at Michigan and you're trying to make a decision you know Michigan from 86 to 92 Michigan finished first six out of seven times and now you come in in 94 you know from 93 to 96 Michigan is fourth third third and fifth mm -hmm. so from what you grew up watching and then the decision that you made like you're like oh man dang where we at right now you know you bowl leaves Moeller comes in Moeller gets into some stuff Lloyd takes over nobody wants Lloyd what I'm getting at uh big bro what was the the switch? How did it flip on in 97? Because, like I said, from 93 to 96, fourth, third, third, fifth. And then in 97, you guys flipped the switch, man. And I don't think Michigan looked back from 97 probably to 2004. Mm -hmm. So, like, what was that switch that flipped on in 97? Well, it was the fact that we were mediocre. And, and when I was in high school, let's call it from 88 to 92, from the seventh grade to the 11th grade, Michigan won five straight Big Ten titles. And so they had a national title in basketball. The Fab Five were there. Desmond Howard, you know, he won the Heisman. Michigan was popping yeah. in the late 80s and early 90s, mm. which did a lot for all of us to come to Michigan and want to, and want to play for the Wolverines. What happened is when we got there, and I got there in 94, but that 93 class, was the first class to not win a Big Ten championship since 1969. Mm -hmm. So if you go 93 to 96, that class let the block M down and broke a streak and a tradition. That's really what happened. And we know we left a lot of meat on the bone in 95 and 96. We had talent. So in 96, we go out to uh, Purdue. They just lost their coach, Jim Coletta. Got fired on Monday. They're two and seven. They beat us nine to three, mm. and 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 we were ranked number seven in the country Damn. with one loss. Damn. And and that one loss was already to Northwestern, who we were already sixteen to zero in Darn the fourth quarter, Audrey. and they came back and oh, beat man, us by one that. point. So we were always knocking on the door. We had find a way to trick it off, like most Michigan teams would yeah. have, of of just historic times. Like Tony always, Romo. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Romo, hey, Tony too. Romo. You know, so in 97, I think we got rid of some of the bad apples and some of us knew we came there and we were not living up to the tradition of at least winning a Big Ten championship. And then Charles, Charles and I started talking more national title uh, to the rest of the team. Let's just go ahead, scratch the Rose Bowl. Let's just beat everybody and get out of here. And that was the mentality. He, he's one of the yeah. best defensive players in Michigan history, in Big Ten history. Of course, a member of the 1997, an intricate member, an integral uh, member of the 1997 National Championship uh, team. He just is brought up Charles Ray. Woodson, so we're going yeah, to get into that. We got to get into that. We got to get into uh, college football today, yeah. Michigan today. We got a lot more yeah. with Marcus Ray. This is Armani and Edwards, Woodward Sports Network. Start a new career in an industry that is always essential, the heating and cooling industry. Learn more today by visiting northwesterntech.edu. Bottom 
Ryan or Monty and Edwards coming back with a like a longtime friend of mine, a big brother, mentor when I was uh, at Michigan. I think the cool thing about it is not everybody has a chance to like be around their idols and kind of mentors and people that they really respected uh, growing up. And, and even in the college level or even in the NFL level, like he was on the sidelines and we can get into that to a minute. He was on the sidelines a lot of times my senior year. And my senior year, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew where I was going to be. But you, even as good as you are, you still need that person to hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. Like, you need that person to tell you, yo, B, you're all right. It's not, it's not as bad as you think it is. Or uh, you tripping. Like, and he was always able to do that for him, man. I really appreciate it. Actually, I got Maz asking you a question about that. You know what, you know what I'm going to have a mask about. But you just talked about Charles Woodson. Uh, and Charles Woodson, Seawood, the GOAT, Bubba Chuck, like everybody knows, like, <laughs> just got inducted into a Hall of Fame, well-deserved, first ballot, Heisman Trophy winner, beat out Peyton Manning. Like, to this day, that's one of the biggest wins in Michigan history uh -huh. is him winning that Heisman over Peyton. But let's talk about what people don't really get a chance to talk about or even know. Let's talk about how Charles won the Heisman Trophy. People don't know how intricate you are to the success of Charles Woodson, his, soft, well, his whole career, especially mm -hmm. his junior year. People don't realize that Charles was able to do a lot of things that he was able to do because you have a brilliant mm -hmm. football player that's the safety that really was the leader of that defense, got everybody in position that will allow, you know what? Let me stop talking about it. Talk about how intricate you were to his success. And, and please, don't be humble. Okay. Well, Vance Bedford is the one who actually took his brain and put it inside of my brain. That's where it started. Um, talking about started, defensive it, back coach from Michigan back then. Yep. Former defensive back coach at Michigan. So I was a linebacker in high school. He transform, transformed me into a safety. Charles couldn't backpedal. You know, he's, he was born with club feet. So he actually was a terrible corner, but a great athlete. So Vance taught him the technique. And then I would say we started our first game against Illinois. And then in uh, 95, let's just fast forward a year later, Charles asked to move into the dorm with me in South Quad in training camp so he could learn the defense. A lot of people don't know that. Then we moved in together in the summer of 97. And I believe if we don't live together, I was bringing film home. So I was the coach on the field. I was tutoring Charles from our apartment. And he'll tell you that. Those are the facts. So every time we lined up, I was able to capture the formation, the down and distance, what I saw on film, um, the field position, and why we made the call and tell Charles in three seconds where the ball was going. I never played for him, but I did think for him a whole lot. And I never got my flowers, so he said, don't be humble. No, you know, no. So I, I, I don't think Charles can tell his entire college story without my name coming up. And we're still friends, and we laugh about it to this day. Yeah. But there were times when I got him lined up when he didn't know what was going on. But, but he was a great player. He actually became a better NFL corner once he started learning the game at the pro level. And when he switched to safety, he would call and ask me, hey, what do you think about this? What do you look at as a safety? And one of the things I told him, cornerbacks play from an angle. Safeties play from a, from a three-way view, left, right, middle. And it's a totally different game in the pass and in the run. So, but going back to Michigan, Charles was a phenomenal player. Um, but everything he did, he had help. Because people always say, hey, he took away half the field. Well, how do you get eight interceptions? Where else were they going to throw the ball? And at one point, we were tied for the lead in the Big Ten. And he looked at me in that Wisconsin game and said, I can't let you lead this team in interceptions. <laughs> I said, I didn't know we were competing. <laughs> I had no clue we were competing. So his competition was in his own apartment yeah. as far as statistically. I was nowhere near the, the greatest player like he was because I think he's the GOAT. But yeah, I, agree. I agree. I held my own, and I did teach him the game as far as mentally coverage-wise that Vance Beffer taught me. I will the reason say why I, I was a, and I'm going to let you go. The reason why I was able to, to bring that up is I played in New York for the Jets with uh, Darrell Rivas and Kerry Rose. And the reason I was able to kind of pay attention to that, Ryan, is in 2008, Darrell Rivas had five interceptions. In 2009, Darrell Rivas had six interceptions and 37 pass deflections. Mm. But he did that under Kerry Rose. Like, I watched Kerry be able to guide Rivas and say, all right, Rivas, you want to do your own mm. thing? I got you. I got your back. Rivas, watch out for this. They're going to do this. I got you. I watched Kerry navigate Darrell Rivas, who they call the best cornerback in the last 20 years. I watched him do that. In two years, he had 11 interceptions and 60 pass deflections. In the next eight years, he had 13 uh, interceptions, 
and 20 pass deflections. So you tell me if I'm wrong in, why, in asking that question. Well, there's no doubt about it. And, Marcus, I will tell you, and I'm not just saying this because you're here, within my friend group at Michigan, we all knew that it was a team out there. Yeah. Charles isn't as good without you on the field. You're not as good without him on the field. That's just the way it, that's just the way it worked. So I'd like to believe that, that you got some credit a little bit because I know my friend group loved you because you were the, you were the pound guy. I mean, you were the guy that was out there directing everything. You were quarterback of the defense. You were the guy out there. So uh, I'd like to believe that we were smart, astute watchers <laughs> of the Michigan football yeah. defense. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> it was more like a Pippin-Jordan relationship. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? I, I felt like people treated it like Batman Hey, Pippin's one of the 50 greatest NBA players, too. That's Don't right. forget it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not now, but like back when they first did the jacket. I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know about now. He's, he's been talking a lot of smoke. I, th I think he got a book coming out or something. <laughs> But uh, here's another question. Maz, you got to get into the story because I want you to ask. Like, I, I always ask him about the story. I always bring it up. So you got to bring it up. All right, talk us, take us back to 2004. Chad Henney at quarterback. It's fourth down. Braylon's getting the ball, and he made one of his very few mistakes there. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, Braylon Edwards was a, one of my favorite Michigan football players of all time. That's how so. praise coming from him. Mm -hmm. So I very used much. to watch the games, and I just remember I felt like – if we would have had a Braylon Edwards, we would have had three national titles instead of one. And that's no, that's no disrespect to anybody I played with. So when I watched this kid, I was watching him for a few years. I saw his rise. And I remember the year before, he had some little situation with Lloyd. And I felt like I had to intervene because I'm one of the former few former players that will reach back silently. Don't want no credit just because I know what I went through as a player and some of the opportunities that I missed out on because of having a certain type of attitude or not understanding the big picture. Brandon Edwards drops the pass, took his eyes off of it uh, as he was turning the corner, fourth and one. And, and it was a big game. And, and when you're a superstar, a lot of your teammates don't know what to say to you. Like, hey, come on, Braylon, step it up. Well, I wasn't his teammate. I was just a big homie at the game. Yeah, I would have told them to shut up. <laughs> yeah, he walked <laughs> off the field and not one person said anything. They were looking up in the, in the crowd and trying to avoid Braylon. So I walked over to him. And you can go watch the TV copy. And you'll see me leaning over top of Braylon saying, hey, man, you straight? And Braylon was looking at him. He's like, I'm straight. I said, nah, you're not straight, dog. You just tricked off the game. He said, nah, I'm going to get it back. And he came back and made some plays. But I was the one f person on the sideline, maybe besides Lloyd, that could have made that connection with Braylon. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, you know, we didn't play together. He was at Michigan. And I love great players that, that do big things for our university. But he had some adversity in that stadium. Same stadium, I intercepted and slid right in front of John Cooper and told him it was my house. Uh -oh. So I didn't want to see my, Ooh. I didn't want to see Excuse my younger me. brother, uh, uh, go out like that mentally. I mean, it didn't take away from his legacy, but uh, we needed that. Poor that John Cooper. Is, is that still in the program? Is that still in the program that, right now? So that ability to be able to have a Marcus Ray come back and lean over a guy like Braylon Edwards. What I would say is, it's not. It's not over the top professed or welcome to a certain extent. Like, we want to. Yeah, we want to. But because of certain powers that be, you know, it's, it's about everything in Ann Arbor right now. It's about everything inside Schimbeckler right now. Like, it's not, you know, like, let's just say, let's call a spade a spade. Like, the, the, yeah, re I mean, let's, the, let's the regime doesn't necessarily promote former players. They don't bring guys in on a consistent. It's more of a... Okay, if I can bring in, you know, Tom Brady, or if I can bring Jay Feely, or if I, yeah, it, 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 but how does it benefit us as a whole, as opposed to, yo, I need to bring Marcus Ray in. Like I've, I've never seen a, I've never seen a talent as it relates to a brilliant mind break down football like that. Let me bring him in and talk about adversity. Let me bring him in and talk about national championship. Let me bring in Braylon Edwards who lives down the street. Let me bring in Lamar. Wood. Like it, it's not like that. Like if you go to Ohio State. And we always talk about Ohio State because they're always the motto. Man, in spring ball, all their former players coach. Like, all their former players come. Am, am I lying? No, sir. All their former players come down in spring. Like, Santonio Holmes, who I played with, Santonio did a whole spring ball. Like, he didn't, he didn't go every day. But he would hang out, be That's there, sad. coast wide receivers. That's why Michigan's in the toilet. And, and this is this is my biggest thing, and this is why I try to reach out, man. I guess we're getting it all out and we're airing it, and I have no problem with it. Like, you got the all-time leading receiver. 30 minutes, 30 minutes door-to-door -door from you, have me come up. 
Have, have, have me watch some film with the players. I was here all spring. I could have went up there during COVID. I was living in Ann Arbor with my girlfriend last year, Ryan. Shout out doing? to Ryan. Hey, Shout girl. Shout out to Ryan. How you doing, babe? Yeah, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was, last year I was living there. I was right across the street. Like, I, and I gladly, I don't need anything. We don't have to talk about it. I don't need you to promote it. We want to come back, but it's not necessarily welcome like it is in other programs. That's, well, that's the bridge that we need to cross. Marcus, I want you to respond to that, and I'll tell you as well where else that is different. We'll do that next. Germani and Edwards. We've got Marcus Ray in the house. We've got Maz here as well. Woodward Sports Network. Welcome to the Call Sam Chopper Shop, where you can win a custom-built chopper while helping our veterans at the same time. Watch as the Bad Pig Custom Team turns this bike into a one-of-a-kind classic chopper. And when it's finished, we'll be donating the bike to Volunteers of America Michigan to raffle off in support of our vets. A great cause to give back to those who've given so much. Watch for Call Sam Chopper Shop episodes on our social media channels and get your raffle ticket today at callsam.com backslash chopper shop. Hey everybody, it's Maz for our good friends and studio sponsor, MyBookie.ag. It's winning season at MyBookie, and they want you to hop on. How about doubling your first deposit with the firepower to add excitement to the games? College football boost odds, NFL lock of the season, over 500000 in contest prizes live on site to make this your best season at MyBookie. All you got to do is use that promo code Woodward Sports, and you are in. Woodward, that's all you got to use. Just use the promo code Woodward. They will match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $1,000. How about that? You got Michigan State playing at Northwestern tonight. Spartans getting three points tomorrow. Michigan, 17-point favorites going against Western Michigan at the Big House. You can bet that. Baseball coming down the stretch as well. All at my bookie. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Got a gambling problem? Call the National Problem Gambling Hotline at one 800 522 4700. So Marcus and Braylon just told a story about how Braylon's senior year in 04, Braylon had uh, a drop on fourth down I against Ohio it. State. He dropped I it. Dropped, dropped it. it. Didn't blame anybody. <laughs> dropped me, it. Hit me in my chest. Yeah, look at that. Uh, I, I, lo I love that accountability too, Braylon. Don't get uh, used to it. But as a star player, there weren't too many people that could say anything to you about it. So it was Marcus Ray who was on the sidelines, who's back in Ann Arbor, who, who's on the sidelines. And he's the one that got to got to lean over and tell you, hey, make sure you're good. Let's go get this. I know where you're going with this. Let me just talk about that moment, and I'm going to let you bring it back. Because you, you bring up a great point. I know exactly what you're doing. In that moment, so for me, I'm number one wide receiver in the country. This is the last game of the year. I know I'm a lock for the Blitnikoff. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a lock for the Blitnikoff. I know we're probably going to win the Big Ten. We're not going to go to the national championship. I know all of these things. But this is my last game, and it's in the horseshoe. It's against Ohio State, and I'm balling this season. You know, even if you look at the stats. Yes, yeah, Columbus. Sorry, one, said one, Ann Arbor. Yeah, even if you look at the stats, 179, 11 catches, a touchdown. Like, they're great stats. I don't care about none of that. I dropped that pass on fourth and three. It was fourth and three. I dropped that pass on fourth and three because I was trying to do the most in that moment. I was trying to – I'm not going to lie. If I'd have called it, I might have scored because they blitzed and I was out. I was trying to do the most. And nobody could talk to me in that moment. Like, no no player on the team because we, we had a relatively young team. Yeah. I didn't want to hear anything from Marlon Jackson. I didn't want to hear anything from Dave Boss. I didn't want to hear anything from Soup, my guy, Eric Campbell. If Lloyd would have came over there, I would have listened, but I didn't want to hear anything from him. He was the only person as a former player, a person that I know has been there, that and he and I, he and I had conversations a couple of when he came over and said what he said, it immediately shifted my mind. Like, I wasn't able to do enough to help and win the game. But I went out there. I changed. I got back into the game. I scored another touch. Well, I scored a touchdown. But that's what we need. So when you were going there, I just remember that moment. I just had a flashback. Like, I, no one could talk to me in that moment but a former player. So to bring Marcus back into this, though, I said, is, is it like that now? Could former players like a Braylon Edwards, like a Marcus Ray, insert former player here, go and just kind of hang out with the football team and be that guy that you were to Braylon back in 04? I don't think it's been that way since Brady Hoke left. I, I, I mean, I mentored Jabril Peppers and all of those guys. I would pick them up. We would have lunch. So I initiated some of that stuff on my own we never advertised it I mean all of those kids that played in that secondary Delano Hill all of them will tell you I used to walk in the building and talk to Greg Madison and say what are what are we doing you know I would try to uh, help Roy Manning who was a first-year cornerback coach you know he was in over his head 
And I would actually walk into Shen Beckler as a BTN analyst and, and not only mentor players, but talk to coaches and everybody. But that, that door was closed as of uh, January 2015, and it's, it probably never will be opened up again. But you ask Jabril Peppers, his tenure in Ann Arbor, who he spent time with once a week, even when he hurt his foot to go into Mr. Spots, he and I used to watch tape. Mr. Spots. Oh, shout out. All man, kind of, I mean, spicy. Shout oh, out to yeah, Keith. my man. So, <laughs> so I don't know if the door is open, and if it is, uh, it, it's a, you, you really have to be very careful if you're reaching back trying to mentor a player Dumb right now. question. Is somebody on the outside looking in? Why not? Like, like what, what is the goal or what would the purpose be of keeping you guys out of Shem Beckler, keeping you guys from having a relationship with these players who, let's face it, many of them are not from Michigan. Many of them don't understand the rivalries with Michigan State, with Ohio State. Uh, you think talk a guy about like it. Braylon, talk about it, you think, Ryan. Do you think a guy like Braylon talk Edwards or Marcus it, Ray could walk in and say, you know what, let me sit you down, young man, and tell you about why this is important here? This is this is what I think, and you can, you know, this is just my thought process, and you let me know what you think. I feel like with uh, Coach Harbaugh, I think everything needs, like all the success, it needs to come from in-house. I think all the success that they have, it needs to come from Jim Harbaugh. It needs to come from McDonald. It needs to come from Ron Bellamy. I don't think they want to have any, to have to give any credit to anybody on the outside. I, I didn't say it was smart. I don't think he wants to give credit to anyone else except his regime. And I could be Isn't wrong. Isn't it the team, that, the team, the team? Bull, bull, you guys weren't taking credit bull, back then. It was you did still, it on your own time. We're still not taking credit. But also, what you get with that, our kids' minds are very impressionable. Like these kids, they're very, even when we were young, we were very impressionable. I think we were a little more mature than this. You know, these kids today. But I think they're very impressionable. So another thing might be he doesn't want to have too many voices, too many conversations, too many ways to do the technique, too many thoughts about what's going on. So I think he tries to keep it in house. That. It's just my thought. I think it's wrong, but I think that's my thought. No, think? I agree with you 100%. And, and, and I don't think Jim Harbaugh can trust. He got too many other people in his ear from up top or his eyes that are watching. So he's not sure if, if a Marcus Ray does develop a relationship and, and, you know, if that kid becomes a better person or a better player like Braylon Who's saying, he going to get the credit to? Who's he going to give the credit to? And sometimes – you know, we got some former guys that may have negative things to say that, that can impact the program. So it's kind of, right. you don't know if he's kind of rolling the dice if you're Jim, but I think the door should be open because a lot of – I wouldn't know Braylon Edwards right now if and Lloyd. be on his show if Lloyd Carr didn't let me on the sideline during the Ohio State game and I was living in Columbus and he was the leader of that team and, and, and at a pivotal moment in his career, it's become a relationship. Uh, a big brother, little brother, Michigan football relationship, broadcasting relationship, something that happened 17 years ago. But that's what Jay Lloyd Chester, Carr. Amari Darbo, Devin Gardner, Brady Hoke let me on the sideline. Brady Hoke let me talk to them. I remember when Brady Hoke first got to Michigan. Remember spring ball when he had the first meeting where he started naming all the numbers into the last time national championship, yep. the last time we've done this. And he basically brought all the former players back. Like whoever wanted to come to that spring, mm -hmm. uh, the spring game, uh, the Friday day before the spring game whoever wanted to come and he basically said we want this to be your house we want you guys to come back brady made a conscious effort to do that there's another thing too it's more of a status thing if you're if you're not tom brady or a guy like Desmond. jay people don't know jay philly that's my man we came in together he was a walk-on mm -hmm. i mean people need to talk about his success of just you know we used to call, him, did, him, we used to call him charlie I mean, brown we had him on the other day okay yeah. yeah so but but jay's a great broadcaster too but i think the program needs to bring in more recognizable names okay yeah. so you know the usual oh, just guys are passionate about michigan marcus yes yeah, yeah. all they're gonna bring in it's is john, status john thing. jansen c wood tom brady then chris weber it gets to the point where you, you know like they don't even play football you know who does it differently you know who's got an oklahoma no, lsu forget about alabama that. you walk down the hall juan howard juan howard does it differently you played for michigan if you're mike godfredson the the, the five yeah. eight uh, point guard for Michigan yeah, back in two thousand Spike Albert Spike Albert <laughs> Spike you come on back 
Yeah. If, if you're uh, insert player here, I mean, you got your Michigan, your family. At the end of the day, Michigan's if you clout chasing. At man. the end of the day, if you've ever put on a jersey, no matter the sport or or leotard or a unitard or if whatever your uniform is, if you've ever worn those colors, if you've ever put that uniform on for a year. Two years, three years, four years, you have something to give back. I don't care if you're a walk-on. I don't care if you're a five-star. I don't care if you're all-American. I don't care if you didn't play. If, you, if you're on the team, you have something to give back. Let me ask you this, guys. We were so excited when Jim Harbaugh was hired. We were very excited. Hey, Brady Hoke, he don't wear headphones. He don't know what the heck he's doing. Blah, blah, blah. If he stayed, I'm going to ask Marcus, Braylon, and Ryan. He stayed. Are they in better shape now than they than they are? Nobody mentioned the headphones when they won the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out. I know. There. I'm just throwing it out nobody there because that's what we always no, said. Nobody mentioned the headphones when they won the Sugar Bowl. Is button. Michigan better with Brady than they than with now Jim? I'll take the bullet. I think so. Because I think when Brady, when he left, those guys were sophomores. He left he he left a lot of food in the cupboard. And in year seven, if you go in, if you move in the house and you eat those that food and them groceries and then they're gone and you don't restock the cupboard that means you didn't do your part so whoever got kicked out of that house left him a lot to work with and i and and i think brady hope was once he would have if brady would have stopped hiring his friends mm -hmm. yeah. and just went ahead and, and just hired some serious for real not the mac coaches no diss to the mac i'm just saying when i was coaching at central michigan Butch Jones said he heard Urban Meyer give a speech. He said, when I left Bowling, when I, when I went to Utah from Bowling Green, I left the MAC coaches in the MAC. Mm -hmm. When I went to Florida from Utah, I left the WAC coaches in the WAC. And when I got to Florida, I put a squad together. And that's what Urban Meyer's Woo! mentality was, and that was not Brady Hoke's mentality. That's fine. And it, it one or two more years, he didn't want to give up, oh, Al Borges, that was his homeboy. He mm -hmm. brought all of his San Diego State buddies and Ball State buddies to the big show. Everybody don't get to make the trip. And, and Brady was loyal to a fault. He would have learned his lesson. He would have started bringing in more guys. Uh, and, and next thing you know, Michigan, I'm not saying they would have been a national championship, but that 2016 team, Brady Hoke's boys. And if you want to give uh, Rich Rod credit. Talk about it, Marcus. you want to give Rich Rod credit, oh, well, Brady won. My, no, Brady, R Brady won with Lloyd Seniors and Rich's quarterback. Understand that in 2011. That 07 class, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2011. All I'm saying is Junior Hemingway was recruited by Lloyd, Lloyd Carr. Carr. Come on now. Let's stop faking the funk with Greg this thing. Greg Matthews, I Lloyd think, Carr. See, everybody got mad when I said Bush Jones should have been the coach. But I really didn't say that. What I did was I made a comparison. It's, and, and my man Sam Webb kind of set me up. So that, so, that. so, so, Good old Sam. so Sam part of my that. tenure in the media in Ann Arbor was always tainted. You said uh, Butch Jones was a better coach than Jim Harbaugh. Well, both of them are stinking it up, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, Bush, Bush doesn't even have a – now he's down at Arkansas State, Record but I'm, I'm saying. Uh, but year seven, why didn't you give Rich uh, seven years? Why didn't you give Brady seven years? We talked about it. So now we sit here on borrowed time. Everybody playing with house money. Imagine being at the casino and you never lose. You, mm. you can sit there all night. That's who Jim Harbaugh is. He's sitting at the, sitting at the uh, crap table, throwing crap, and his, they still stacking his chips. Can you give me another ten minutes, Marcus? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, hey, that, that, boy, that boy is hot. Oh, he's got, he's got did, get did, going didn't tonight. I tell you he was just going to throw him into the I told line. you he wasn't going. Hey, they gonna let, they're not going to let me come speak to the team anyway. <laughs> what game am I playing? Hey, 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 hey. You, you ain't the only one, man. You're going to be sitting together. Neither one of us going to be sitting together. Flame on. <laughs> Sports Network. Sit tight. I'm sorry. Buckle I'm sorry. up. <laughs> Do you know why realtors love using Hall Financial as a lender? because of our commitment to speed and service. We have nearly 4,000 five-star reviews already. Call today, 248-308-5000, or go to callhallfirst.com. All right, right back here with Marcus Ray. I'll tell you. This is fire uh, right now, This man. is incredible stuff here. I'm going to have to wear a mask to Ann Arbor, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you? Look, 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 here's the problem. Here's the problem. And, and, and here's where I appreciate guys like you, Braylon Edwards, and you, Marcus Ray, and Jay Feely that we had on yeah. uh, in, in large part, too. Uh, uh, enough with the sugar coating this stuff. Yeah. Let, let's get, get, we're all big boys here. 
Can we put our big boy pa pants on and talk about this thing objectively? Tell the real story about what's going on at Michigan. We haven't been good. It, we haven't. We, we've played a couple of big games in 15 years. Yeah. Seriously, it's been really, really bad. Ohio State last night just brings in some some quarterback you never heard of and just trucks Minnesota. They it was nice, nice 14-10 uh, at the half, and then all 35-14 second half. Good night. They I had read. to warm up. That's you know, all. I mean, it's like come. They on. always struggle in the first game of the year. So, though. like if you notice, though, that's kind of like Ohio State's thing. They struggle the first game of the year and they figure it out at the end. I think the big thing for us. Man, and as Michigan fans, as Michigan alums, as Michigan football players, uh, as whatever, we just tired of excuses. Hey, man, look, like, I think that's the big thing. We're tired of excuses. And, 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 and look, the record is what the record is. Michigan fans yeah. need to stop making that. See, my big thing is Michigan fans need to stop making excuses and get more. mad at people for telling the I, truth. Th that, that's what. That's, that's one of the biggest problems. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're inviting people on the show that want to tell right. it like this it is. This wouldn't be acceptable anywhere else in the country except UCLA. That want to tell it like it is. So, Marcus, I will ask you. This is year seven uh -huh. for Jim Harbaugh. I don't care what you say. You don't get a year eight if you don't beat Michigan State, Indiana, Ohio State. I think you have to win those games. I think you have to win nine, ten games with a win over Ohio State. If you don't beat Ohio State at home with a freshman quarterback, when are you going to beat Ohio State? I'm sorry. It's got to be this year. I don't think they're ever going to beat the Buckeyes again. I'm just going to throw that one out oh. there. Quote it, tweet Whoa. it, and prove me wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. And I yeah. live in Columbus, and I see what's going on down there. But – it's a juggernaut. Look at how low the standards have dropped. Hey, we just got to beat Indiana. Let's try to get to nine wins. We're, we're, Big Ten championship or bust. That's at, that's, at least. that's the, at least like we were talking national championship. Michigan can't get to Indianapolis. Let, let alone so you got Pat Fitzgerald uh, taking the remember, Jim remember when remember when uh, Jim Harbaugh remember in the off season when he was doing these elaborate trips oh, South yeah. South Africa. And, oh, matter of fact, and, took and, one of them when so, we had our 20-year reunion so, for so, the national oh, title. Same weekend. This type of guy uh, he is. In South Africa, Paris, London, all these places. And I remember Rome. That, at Rome, via Roma. I remember them asking me. They said, "Hey, Braylon, you know." And this is when I was with you know the other network right when I had started. It was like, "Hey, Braylon, you know, where do you think uh, Harbaugh should take the kids next?" I said, "How about the Indianapolis? How about the Indy? How about the Indy? Oh, I don't care one. about Rome or South Africa. It's a it's U of M. They will have that opportunity later in life. I guarantee you. Mar How about Indianapolis, Marcus? I don't want to bury the lead here. I mean, and I don't think you're being facetious. You don't think they're ever going to beat Ohio State again until what?" Until, um, until Ohio State goes on probation or somebody does something, uh, un un yeah. until until Ohio State hires the wrong guy. Because that what they figured out was twenty years ago when they brought in that vest, that was the worst thing that ever happened to Michigan football. It ain't Rich Rod, it ain't Brady, and it ain't uh, Jim Harbaugh. His first it was press conference, Jim Tressel. The first press conference I remember because Jim Jim Tressel, I think that press conference was January of 2001 and then I was a freshman in uh, August of 2001, but I remember that because I had just committed to Michigan uh, verbally and I remember that press conference I was watching. It was at a basketball, basketball game, game and Jim Tressel said a bunch of blah, 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 blah. Oh, oh and oh, by the way, we're going to beat that team up north. I'll never forget it. And then they consistently beat our butt. And, they did, and, and beat they keep our hiring the right guy. Yeah. And the one year they didn't have the right guy in Luke him. Fickle, Michigan won that game. So you're not yeah. you're not wrong, right? Yeah. So so the only way I think so I, I'm I'm not gonna sit here. Oh, they got to out recruit them. They got to finish and fourth down. Take all that because even though because Brayman mentioned it to me off the show about that fourth down. I don't care about if he got it or not. You quit on the next play. You had a guy tackled on third and long, and you never should have been in that situation. You had a two-score lead. Not to mention he got the penalty. Like, a lot of people don't talk about that game where he, he was out of sorts. Remember he got the penalty? Like, where he ran down the field and got the – you don't do things yeah. like that in big moments. You don't make uh, Wilton Spate pass the ball inside the 10-yard line when his shoulder's been hurting, when he was hurt the week before that. You did that twice. I don't think Michigan got blown out by Brady Hoke. I mean, I don't think Ohio State ever blew Brady Hoke out. Mm. Devin Gardner throws for four. Four or five hundred yards, whatever it is, on a on a broken foot, 
Went for two to one game. Went for two. Went All two they do is throw it up to Funches. They come back and run the same play and throw it right to the guy. But uh, uh, um, there were several times. Was that 2000 and was it uh, 12 when uh, uh, Shoelace had popped the long oh, yeah. right before yeah. the half and we're winning and didn't yeah. come out and we lose 26 to 21 because you let them drive down right before half and get a cheap yep. three. So that. what I'm saying is Brady Hope, that game was competitive. This mm -hmm. game will never be competitive with the guy we got there. I think one of the things. Except for 2016. I, with think one guys of, were there. I think one of the things, and, you know, we keep beating up on, you know, the current regime. And, you know, we're not doing it on purpose. We're just calling it as it is. I remember one thing that rubbed me the wrong way is he talked about the rivalry. He talked about Ohio State. And he talked about Michigan. And he said something. I said, you know what? That's it. That's the loss. He said, yeah, we approach that game like every other game. It's not every other game. You can't approach it like every other game. When you watch Michigan under him come out for that game, it seems like every other game. It's nothing special. They don't do anything extra. They look like a regular football team about to go out and play Western Michigan University. When Ohio State comes out against Michigan, you can see red in their eyes. You can see blood in the water. You can just see a different level of physicality and a mental. When I walked on the field the last time I went to the Ohio State Michigan game, I want to say it was three years ago, I looked at one sideline and I looked at the other sideline and I said, this is about to be a bloodbath. Here's the thing. Remember you asked me uh, how did we flip that switch yeah. a few segments ago? 97. Here's the deal. When we popped Ohio State in 95 when they were number one. Chimonga uh, Biakabatuka. They were number two in the country, yeah. And, and the real Heisman Trophy winner ran for 313 yards and the other guy halfway quit. Well, when we went down to their stadium the next year and they were undefeated, number two in the country, and we popped them again, that's when we said, so our, is our whole legacy going to – because your, your legacy at Michigan is your record versus Michigan State and Ohio State. And did you, did you win a conference title at some point? And, and did you graduate? And three and one. But once we knew we could knock off Ohio State with relative ease, it, it wasn't like – we were in some kind of situation where we couldn't get out of. We went to their stadium, punched them in the mouth. And then after two years of us doing them like that, we said, we're not going to let y'all do us like that, 97. So that's what made us finish the deal is we knew we were legit. We yeah. just can't have five turnovers against Purdue and then five against Penn State the next week because those two Michigan teams would quit. All the talent, we would turn the ball over. We had young quarterbacks. You know, we had we – had, First-year defensive coordinator in Greg Madison in 95 and 96. When, when, by the time Herman took over, we knew what it was. Mm -hmm. But because we could beat the Buckeyes, even in a four-loss season, we just told ourselves, man, let's go ahead and do just run the table one time. Because we, we knocked off way better Ohio State teams than they're losing to now. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, Marcus, this has man. been – Incredible. Did, didn't uh, I tell you this? <laughs> hey, hey, can you put the jacket on real quick? Yeah. Let me, uh, yeah, let me get, go get up. Get quick. up. We're going to do a quick deviation here. Wait, well, he's putting the jacket on. I want to ask you, Marcus, how did Jim Harbaugh build this Teflon jacket of his that said he's the greatest thing since sliced bread? He's the guy that came here, and me and Ryan were just jumping up and down for joy, putting it in all Michigan State fans. We got you back now. What happened? How did he do this? Well, I, Where did he fool? Well, it, no coach does it by themselves. It, uh, go back to Stanford when they were 4-8, and 5-7, eight, 8-5, and seven, eight and five, and then 12-1. Uh, and one. There was a guy named David Shaw that was there really making that thing happen. Uh, when, when the San Francisco 49er job was inherited, I just told Mike Singletary this in uh, Canton. I said, you left a lot of meat on the bone with that team in San Francisco when that other coach came in after you. He said, I know. He gets all that credit for San Francisco, and I was there. I was in San Francisco when he started his tenure. I was there in 2011 when he started, and I, you know, I wasn't there when they got to the Super Bowl. But one people, they give him all the credit for that. You know whose credit is deservingly so in that situation? Greg Roman. Greg Roman. Greg Roman was a beast as an offensive coordinator. He realized who Alex Smith was. What Alex Smith can do, he can't throw the ball down the field, but you got one of the most athletic tight ends in the league or maybe ever in Vernon Davis. We're just going to run him on some over routes, some play action. You got one of the best running backs of all time in Frank Gore. You got a speedster in Ted Ginn. You got some guys, man, look, just make it easy. And we got the best defense in the league. Greg Roman is what made that 49ers thing go right. Brandon, I want to, before I get out of here, man, he's uh, Brandon oh, yeah, we'll get, we'll is tight, rocking man. that 9-7 brand. We're oh, dropping yeah, that. It's actually uh, in the MDN now. That That's a nine, limited seven. edition 
a nine seven Letterman's coat. So this is mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 I won't have a job if I don't take it back. Baby. Appreciate you helping us nah, out with okay. that, though, my I'm man just, James Whitley. Pick doing that up at the that. pick that up at the end of the yeah. nine seven. Uh, that is Letterman a year that will live on in Michigan you. history whatever, for so long. Whatever they offer in that day, I am Dan. I sell this to you a little cheaper. I beat the price, and that represents the nineteen ninety seven national championship. Of course, team, absolutely, so it's no, a mentality. No bro. doubt about it's it, Marcus deal, Ray. Man. Thanks. Hopefully, the Christmas card from Jim Harbaugh doesn't get lost in the mail. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll put it with the rest of them. <laughs> I love man. you, man. You got an invitation oh, here anytime you want, my friend. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I can get my own ticket. Hey. <laughs> I'm glad I get my own ticket. Hey, I got one signature on my winged helmet at home, and it's this guy's. Appreciate hey, you, never bought it, have, you, you never bought it up here for me to sign? It's, That's because it, I just yeah, met you a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we're already. You know what? And he's already and pissed he's still at mad your mask. You know what? I'll, I'll pick up the next time I'm in the John. Okay? Man, Call chill me. out. Man, chill out. We'll I'm do not, that no, next. I'm not talking to you. I'm never calling Thanks to Marcus Ray. One word sports Who network. Who loves you? You. Marcus Ray. <laughs> Tony is a third generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust resistant and made for all weather use and the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, want to let you know about Lady Janes. Let's be honest here. We like simple stuff. Football five days a week, right? I mean, why not? Plus, things uncomplicated. We're uncomplicated people. Lady Janes haircuts for men. Walk in, sign in, sit down, and before you know it, you are handsome and clean like this. Look at this do here. Have that, that done. Oh, my goodness. Get guy. to Lady Janes. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. It is wicked awesome. I'm telling you, that was that one was, of the most enjoyable yeah. experiences Didn't in I the tell history you bring it? of the program here on Woodward Sports. You know what you did mention is your hair looks good. This is after a long week, too. I'm telling this you, This is after baby. a long week. Look at that, All man. All right. Look, look at that. that. Yeah, boy, Rico it, it, Suave. It, 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 uh, it benefits us working inside a hair salon. They're going to hook me up. <laughs> yeah, I've been, going, I've been going to the same barber. I've known him since high school. I uh, shout out to my boy Tay West. Hey, Tay. I've, been, I've been going same person. He cuts my hair. Uh, I might have to let them, you know, trim the beard up or something. Dude, I'm telling you. I might have to hook um, me up a little bit. A little hot lather neck shave. Okay. That nice, didn't nice hurt little, anybody. A uh, little hair wash. I'm telling you. A little beard wash. It's a great experience here. Uh, Maz, you want to get in here? I mean, how great was that, uh, Marcus Ray? Uh, uh, you know what? We've been saying that a lot, how much fun we're having with all these conversations. The other day we had uh, uh, Brady Jay. Quinn. I mean, I it was awesome. I couldn't stop. I wanted more, and yeah. I and I want Marcus. To you be got here. it today. I want Marcus. You know me. I always say I'm I'm a biggest Marcus Ray fan there is. He don't hold any punches. This is a Columbus kid. Played at Michigan. If if you don't believe that guy, yeah. who the heck are you gonna believe? But that's why it worked too at Michigan, right? I mean, if you look at that '97 championship team, if you go back and really look at some of the great teams in Michigan football history, go look and see where the guys were recruited from. Ohio, Pennsylvania, you know, Michigan, Michigan, Ohio. We didn't. Leave, they didn't leave the area. Like every every once in a while, and you they owned the area. Not only did yeah. they not leave it, they Hel owned Illinois. the area. Yeah, there, like, there, there was you weren't going anywhere else. Yeah, you know Illinois. Uh, Indiana, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio. You don't really have to go anywhere when you recruit the top players in that, and you really do your homework. One, I want to go back to something he said, and he talked about when the switch flipped on for them. Mm -hmm. They weren't winning Big Ten championships in 94, 5, and 6, but you know what they were doing? They were popping Ohio State in the mouth, and that's 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 eventually why Cooper got fired because he couldn't beat Michigan. Was he two and ten against Michigan? two and ten? Like they were always going, you know, they'd go in the feed and lose to Michigan. They'd be number two and lose to Michigan. Like they they Lloyd took that game serious. Like Lloyd's like, hey, we have to do this, and I think Lloyd figured it out. If we can beat this team, if we can pop this rivalry, it will give us a sense of confidence. 
and we'll figure it out. And I think that's what happened. You like know, you, said. you mentioned Lloyd, and one thing I didn't get a chance to ask Marcus was about the relationship with Lloyd now, because you you mentioned you know how, how you know you had a. I don't give me a sense of if this is a fair word or not, but a tumultuous relationship with Lloyd Carr when you were there, and now it's it's really really good. Not necessarily tumultuous. There were but, times, but a lot of there friction. Were, the friction. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, but and Mark and, is crazy. And, Marcus had a very similar relationship, and, and that's what I'm saying. And I didn't get a chance to ask him how the yeah. relationship is now. Good. Uh, yeah. It's it, good. And, and I love that because I told Lloyd that we were having Marcus on today, and he got excited. He sent me a little emoji and yeah, said he called just, me next I, week. Look, I love Lloyd Carr. I just think the world of the guy, and I think when he was the coach at Michigan. He coached you guys hard. He coached you guys. He wanted the absolute best out of you. He wasn't going to settle for it, no. and he was going to do it his way. And and I think over years, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were living it. I was just observing it. But over the years, once you get older, you realize what he was doing no. as you look back and, and, and remember that period of time in your life. I think one of the biggest things, too, is um, Loy was an individual that – he realized that he didn't know everything. He realized that he wasn't the greatest offensive or defensive mind. He realized that you know there might be some living rooms that someone else will be better suited to, to tag mm -hmm. along with to get the recruits and things of that nature. Like that's what made success. Like him being able to say, hey, you know what? Uh, I need to bring Jim Herman in on this, or I need to defer to Vance Bedford on Charles Woodson, or I need to bring Soup in for my wide receivers, or I, I see this, but Soup is—is is this what really is going Coach on? Coach Campbell talking, yeah, talking about Soup. Yeah, but what's going on, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Coach Campbell had a list, but I think he he defer, he deferred to the geniuses at the positions that were hired to to coach a defensive coordinator offensive coordinator but he also knew when to step in and say something to them when he didn't like what was going on like yo you're getting too fancy with this offense you're doing too much we need to dial it back down give train the ball mm -hmm. stop trying to throw the ball to 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 dt and Merc and uh, not Mercury, but uh, 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 Marquise. Marquise stop Walker. stop trying to blow the ball to keys and dt get the ball to train or stop giving the ball to train so much. Stop blitzing all the time with James Hall and, you know, et cetera. I think he was able to step in when he was supposed to, and that's what allowed him a lot of success. You got anything, Maz? Anything brilliant to say? I'm just excited. Yeah. And um, you know what? He's got me back in the mood for Michigan football because I was one of the guys that's been left in the dust. Uh, like, I'm done. I, I, I never thought I'd say that I, last year I, I hardly even paid attention. Because, well, for a number I, of reasons, I, last yeah. year. I'm, I'm just saying, the year prior, even. Yeah. I just don't. I don't feel like they're going to do what they usually did. What was the stat you gave us earlier today? That like Ohio State is just absolutely trucking us for what 20 years. But uh, back in the yeah. day, not too far back. But Michigan trucked them for 15 years. Yeah, from uh, from 1985 to 2000, Ohio State only beat Michigan three times. So for all those slappies out there in Ohio State to talk a lot of stuff, we, and we know it's current, and what have you done for me lately, don't forget, we started the butt-whooping process, and, but that was the consistency. That's when you knew it was what? You had Jamie Morris in that 85 team. You had John. You had uh, Coach Harbaugh. You had Coach Harbaugh. You had players. You had a consistent identity of knowing what you were going to be, and then eventually it changed. Speaking of Michigan, let's get more current. Michigan plays. Let's do it. Michigan plays tomorrow against Western. Yep. All right. Uh, Western Michigan, uh, Caleb Ellaby. Well, like I told you yesterday, Caleb Ellaby was the third-rated uh, efficiency. He was the third most efficient quarterback. Western quarterback. Last year, he was 1,800 yards in five games, two interceptions, 18 touchdowns. They got a high-powered offense. Like, they put points on the board. They score. So, that's very scary if you're Michigan. You're like, oh, my God, another team that can score. Here's what I need to see out of Michigan. Aiden Hutchinson missed most of last year with an injury. He's back this year. He's, he's in shape. I've actually caught a couple clips. He looks good. He's leading that team. I need him and Ojabu to get to the quarterback. Like, I need to see them. Curious to see what happens. There. I need to see them get pressure up front. I need to see them getting to the quarterback because the, the, the secondary is still young. They're still inexperienced, so we need to get to the quarterback and make it a little bit easier. I want to see what McDonald does with that 3-4. 34-year-old defensive coordinator. Tell me about it. Lincoln Riley's, what, 38? He's a head coach. No, I'm, I, I, I oh, like yeah, it. Yeah. No, I'm no, saying no, I, like I know, it. yeah. And on the other side, this is what I need to see out of Michigan. 
they finally have a quarterback in Kay McNamara that I think is a guy that Jim Harbaugh was really high on. I think the team is really high on. I think Ann Arbor, well, they're high on anything before the season starts. <laughs> I'm high, I, yeah, I mean, I, it I'm is the home of, the, of hash bash. I'm one of the but, slappies, Braylon. I, I, but, I, but I'm excited. You have a, you have an experienced offensive line, which has been your strong suit for the last couple of years. You have an experienced running back. I'm just interested. You have a couple uh, uh, skill position that's been there. Bell's leading the charge. I just need them to protect K. McNamara. Let K. McNamara use the run to set up the pass, to get comfortable. I don't want to see – this is what I want to see. I don't want to see K. McNamara touched. I want to see Haskins run for at least 80 yards, and I need the receivers to ma- to run some routes and make some catches. We don't have to win by 40. Like, yeah, we do. I want to win by – We I don't wanna, need to win, I by, win 40, by three touchdowns. But I need – but okay, I'm good with that. But that three touchdowns needs to be like a solid three touchdowns. Like, I don't need three touchdowns and where you scored a garbage touchdown late and yeah, you right. really was close. So, a, a solid three-touchdown win and I and no touches for Cade McNamara. Don't touch Cade McNamara. I got to take a break, uh, and I got to get to our man chill out segment, if that's all right. I think Ohio State played last night, too. Oh, man. man. What do you got? What do you want to do? It's a Friday. It's a holiday weekend. You want to do man chill out? You want to do an Ohio State? Uh, man chill out, then Ohio State. How about that? Armani Sounds and Edwards, good. we got Maz. All right. Woodward Is he still Sports up? Network. Wake up. Wake oh, up, Maz. Wake, wake up. up. Wake I, up. I, I can't wait. Let's go. Wake up, Maz. Hurry up. I'm looking to bring out another HVAC tech right now. We are recruiting five to 10 techs a month. We're looking to grow and expand. Every new tech we hire is from Northwestern Tech. The hands-on training is fantastic. They're always my first call. We love hiring Northwestern Tech grads. They come out trained and ready to work. Our program is only 10 and a half months and our next classes are starting soon. So why wait? I'm looking to hire. I'm looking to hire. Hire a graduate of Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Northwestern Tech. Tech. Yo, if you want to come to the Detroit Lions season opener on the 12th against the 49ers, you may get a chance to see Trey Lance, who could uh, replace Jimmy G. If you want to come to that game, all we need you to do is video record yourself doing a man chill out. Uh, hashtag man chill out. Submit your video to at Woolworth Sport and or at Bottom Line WSN. If you, ch- uh, if you put that video out there, we will get it. We will see it, and if you win, you will be able to go to the game on the 12th. But remember, videos have to be in by September 9th. If you submit a video on the 10th, guess what? No matter how good it is, you don't get the tickets. So be sure you get your submission in by the 9th. Two tickets on the line, and guess what? We love you, man. That was the best. Ever. I just didn't look down. Like, you know, no, I, I know. Dude, I, Maz yeah. never looks down. Anytime. So I figure if I don't look down, maybe it, it'll be easier. It. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, maybe you're driving up north lift, listening to us on the free app that you can see uh, beautifully uh, on the I wall that screen. screen. That's a beautiful screen. My goodness. Um, we appreciate it. Tell a friend about us. Hopefully you have a safe trip up north. If you're just kind of on your couch watching us on television, we appreciate you as well. Wherever you're consuming the podcast, the live show, whatever you want to call it, streaming show, I don't even, uh, however you say it, right? Twitter, we appreciate Twitch, you. YouTube, hey, you know, I never get a chance to say it. You always say Please. it. But, uh, no, not like that. I'm talking about the fans. We really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Now. We're just getting this thing off the ground and rocking and rolling. So that's one of the things that having the beard. Sometimes it itches. But we're just getting this thing rocking and rolling and off the ground, man. And we're having a great time doing it. But we do it for you guys. And you guys are our driving motivation. So we appreciate you. But keep tuning in, man. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to tell a friend. Because this thing is only just begun. And I think we're giving you a sense. That this is our third week we've been doing this. Not and even it, 21, it, like 21 right. days. Yeah. I mean, this, this is our third week we've been doing this. This is our the end of our second 13. full week. Yeah. Yeah. really that we've been doing this and uh, hopefully you're getting a sense of what we want to be hopefully what we are about you know we like to have conversations with newsmakers with, with, with people like a Marcus Ray Jay Feely Brady Quinn Jay, Jay Billis, Billis yeah. uh, Ian Herman Rappaport Moore. Uh, Herman, Herman Moore, Moore. Yeah. I mean Stan Edwards has a great perspective Can't forget that. no absolutely <laughs> and, and we're gonna be I'm doing Tuesdays with him throughout the uh, football season oh, as well. So, I mean, it's just a really fun thing we're doing here. And 
hopefully, you know, it's just another option for you. You know, I mean, we're not competing with anybody. We're just here, little old us. Yes, we are. Ourselves. We're competing with ourselves, and we're trying to put out some good content for you all out there as well. Okay, so now one of the things, and Braylon just mentioned it, was the Man Chill Out segment. We're trying to solicit Man Chill Out videos from you, the listener, from you, the watcher. And the best one, we're going to give you some Lions tickets to go to the opener on September 12th against the San Francisco 49ers. Here is how you do a Man Chill Out. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our segment, Man Chill Out. Pack your bags, get the hell off. Now, do you understand what you did? Zaddy, chill. What the hell is even that? (laughs) Exactly. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Max Kellerman has moved on from ESPN's first take. Yeah, tired of getting yelled at. Apparently so. Now, he always agreed with Stephen A. Smith. I don't know if you what watched you that show. Do? I mean, seriously, he just sat there and agreed with Stephen A. It wasn't even much of a show. Stephen A. would say something, and Max Kellerman would say, well, Stephen A., I agree with you. Um, so here's the deal now. During football seasons, the new lineup for first take to debate Stephen A. Smith is going to be on, on Mondays only. It will be Michael Irvin. And then 88. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they will have rotating guests. And on Friday, every Friday throughout the football season, it will be Mr. Tim Tebow. How's that going to work? So on five different days of first take, they will have five different hosts. There is no show on the planet that succeeds when you have that much turnover. The ensemble yeah. shows do not work. Stephen A. I love Stephen A. Smith. He has created a niche at ESPN to be, if not the number one, certainly one of the top three highest paid people at ESPN right now. I think yeah. he might be the highest uh, he's number one. paid person 12, at ESPN. 12 a year. It's just incredible what he's done. But I just don't like this. I don't like what they're doing to him and his show right now. To make five different hosts on five different days. You don't think he has any say in that? Uh, I I think he's got a ton of say. (laughs) But I'm just not sure there's anybody out there as strong that is willing to sit there and and try to debate him five days a week. It just isn't going to happen. So there there isn't any Skip Bayless sitting out there or or, or Will Kane. Will Kane, I thought, was really good debating Stephen A. Smith because they had such different styles, such different perspectives. And he always stood stood his ground. Yeah, You're I, very right about him. Oh, stood his ground. Yeah. I don't like <clears throat> I don't like Will Kane, but he always stood his ground against Stephen A. Smith, and he's the one person, with the exception of Skip, who's now on mm. Fox. He never backed down. To be honest with you, I don't really care for Skip Bayless or Will Kane. Yeah. But they were they, they had arguments to back everything up. You know who would be great to oppose Stephen A. Smith? Colin Cowherd. No. <laughs> who, who do you say, Fish? You got the desk might not be able I, to hear I, me. I but you know who you know what Sorry. Will Kane is? I can't hear you. Will Kane's on Fox News. Will Kane's on Fox. Oh yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear I couldn't yeah, hear I, you. I, I said, Will okay. Kane's on Fox. That and, and that's fine. But, but what I'm saying is the, the one person that I think would have been great to debate Stephen A. Smith five days a week, you might think I'm crazy. I'm listening. Rob I'm... Parker. I think Rob Parker would bad. have been. Come on. I think Rob Parker would have no, been the no, natural. No, no, no. See, now, Bray, the way you do it, like, Rob, Rob's my guy. Look, I love Rob. I, I love a, Rob Parker, he's too. He's a baseball guy. And, and Rob Parker backs up. At, you may disagree with Rob Parker all you want, yeah. but one, he ain't scared. He ain't going to back down. And he's got facts, stats, everything to back up what he says. The one or, place I won't argue with him is baseball. Like, and, he knows his baseball. And that's fine. So... For this five-man rotation, what is going to happen at ESPN, I think that's not going to work. You missed the boat by not pulling back Rob Parker from Los Angeles and his duties at Fox. So to you, Stephen A. Smith, and everybody at ESPN that was ducking Rob Parker, man, chill out. Rob Parker, one of our Detroit own. Shout like, out to one. you, Rob. You should have gotten that baby. job. And, this Get thing, though, you and s- I don't know what the contracts are. You see 
Chris Bus- he, he was doing a thing with Chris Boussard. Now Chris Boussard is on First Things First. So maybe Rob's available. You know what I'm saying? But to your they point. They missed the boat. Can Rob you know, Parker would have been perfect five days a week there. To put it in perspective, and this is more from a, a player standpoint, this is this is my analogy, or this is my this is my analogy on it. Five different hosts a week. You develop no chemistry. You develop no consistency. You know what that's like? Imagine playing with five different quarterbacks every week. It. It's like, oh, you know, this week we'll play with this guy. This week we'll play with Oh, my bad. I actually did do that in Cleveland. But just imagine that. Five quarterbacks, like, in a rotating door. Usually that's doesn't work. No chemistry and no consistency, man, in two Cs. Who's going next week? Me, you? What do you want to do? I'll go. Let's have at it. All right. Oh, All let's right. T- let's take you over to the to the NFL, and we talked about this for a long time this week. Cam Newton, he's out of a job in New England. Uh, Mac Jones is going to be the starter. Bill Belichick didn't actually come out and say that because Cam is unvaccinated, that was the reason. We but he kind of hinted reason. around it, and the guy can't find a job. This is Ian Rappaport from the NFL Network. Check this out. Well, and the Cowboys also claimed Will Greer, who may or may not get a chance to be their number two quarterback now uh, behind Cooper or fighting with Cooper Rush. So then it's like, but let's talk about Cam Newton because that's what everybody wants to know, right? Where is Cam Newton going to sign? And Dallas was a spot that I think some prognosticators thought, well, maybe they don't have an established number two. Okay, that would make some sense. If it's not going to happen there, I'm looking around the league, and unless I'm missing something, I, I really don't see a landing spot. And then you would also say, do you want Cam Newton, who has been a megastar, who is someone who's magnetic in the locker room, a lot of the guys look to, do you want him as a backup quarterback? Some, I mean, that sounds crazy, but like sometimes you don't want a backup quarterback to kind of overpower or overstar the starter. That may happen with Cam Newton just because his reputation. I mean, this is a guy who a lot of the players in the locker room grew up worshiping. Then you would also wonder how much does Cam Newton have left? I mean, it, it didn't sound like the Patriots quarterback battle started off pretty hot and heavy, but Cam Newton, like how much does he actually have left? A lot of questions here, and I am not sure. I'm not sure where Cam Newton gets a job, and I'm not sure if Cam Newton gets a job. Oh, Ian Rappaport, NFL Network. And I, I, I mentioned that actually, yeah. didn't I? You did. You said it one percent yesterday. You said, and and exactly what Ian Rappaport said. It's you don't want this backup overshadowing the starter, and that's where Cam is going to be in most spaces. I mean, there, with the exception of maybe ten places, Cam would overshadow the starter. Like, and you can't have that, especially from a non-vax. Like, it's just it'll create too much of a circus. If you well, will. they have Brian Hoyer there now, and Brian Hoyer, for all I know, I think he is unvaccinated. As well, so they brought him back. But if you didn't live in Michigan, you don't even know what Brian no, Hoyer you don't looks care like. About Brian Hoyer. I, I know that. <laughs> yeah. I know that. So Cam Newton can't get a job, and I said it to you. He's not the same guy. But you don't have to be the same guy to make it on one of these teams. You don't think Cam Newton's a, an upgrade of over uh, Tim Boyle or David Blau? Of course. <laughs> I like David Blau, by the way. I like, of course. I like him personally. Of course. I like him. I, mean, I liked him at Purdue. Hey, I, like NFL. I, told you, I like him over Elijah Sandler. <laughs> NFL. Man, chill out, man. I think another part of that, too, is, you know, it's, it's, is Cam actively pursuing, like, you know what I'm saying, in terms of, like, being on a roster, like, ASAP right now? Or is Cam taking his time? He's sitting back. You know he's in great shape. Is he chilling, spending a little time with the family and kind of, like, weighing his options and just seeing? I, I, yeah, I think I don't think it's a bad thing for Cam Newton to be it's off chill. the roster until one of these contending teams Somebody has a quarterback hurt go down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Until the Minnesota Vikings have uh, COVID Kirk issues. Go, well, and then... He, if you got a COVID issue with Kirk Cousins, then you're not probably going to want. Um, we got COVID issues, so let's bring yeah. in this unvaxxed guy. Uh, speaking of COVID issues, boxer Oscar De La Hoya is hospitalized with COVID-19. He's supposed to fight on the 11th. Yeah, exactly. So that's just an alert that came across. One thing, um, Motor City. Is he fighting in lingerie? Motor City Muscle. Uh, Motor City Muscle on the YouTube chat says Stephen A versus Jason Whitlock. I don't like this. Yeah, that would be that, but but you don't have to like these people to but have a good debate. It's too mundane, though. He was like, yeah. ah, well, yeah. you know, Stephen, I, I I would have to agree because right. you know, hold on, I covered the Fab Five when I was in Eastern. Like, I don't want to hear that. Listen, I don't even want to watch. I don't watch that show. No, I don't either. I don't, if it's I want to get yelled at, I'll just stay home. 
Yeah. Can you just imagine? let my kids and my wife yell at me? Can I don't need to be yelled at. Can you imagine? If I want to get yelled at, I'll stay home. That's can it. you imagine Michael Irvin? And Stephen A. Smith on Monday. Not gonna get a I'm word not in. Not putting edgewise. that on. You don't, even, you don't even need to drink coffee. You don't even need to drink coffee. I don't even have a headache. Thinking not about it. Not gonna get a word in edgewise. Uh, my man, chill out. Is uh, it's an interesting one. You know, it's it's not one that I have to yell about. It's not one that I'm really, really, you know, gonna. Because I've I've done some good ones this week, and I've really gotten passionate. Uh, this one's just more. It's just annoying. Uh, put the picture up. You got you know Aaron Rodgers who. Reported to Camp Lady, talked about retiring, he talked about being a Jeopardy host, although no one wanted him to be the host. This is him and Matt LaFleur, and he posted this on his page uh, yesterday as a troll type of deal. They said we wouldn't get along. And, you know, Aaron's rocking his uh, his hipster, you know, surfer hairdo. Um, my only issue with this is, you know, you guys never really had an issue. Like, you know, you made the one comment about him on, on Jeopardy where they talked about, like, why did you go for it? Yeah, why did you go for Whose decision was it to kick the field goal? And, you know, I said, I'm still trying to figure that out. So you took a, you took a cheap shot at Matt LaFleur on Jeopardy. But outside of that, you guys didn't have a problem. The problem was with Murphy and Guggenkiss. Like, those are the guys that there's the friction there. They don't even have a relationship. They don't talk. So him with the picture and trolling and things of that nature, like, look, man, you just got into camp. Everything seems to be working in, in Green Bay. Seems like you guys are getting along. We know that this is the last season, every, the last dance. Everyone knows that. <laughs> there is no more show after this year as it relates to Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. So we don't need these pictures. Like, what we need you to do is get your alignment healthy so that you can win the NFC North if I was a Packers fan, just get your team together. Just keep going and trugging along as you are, Ryan. You're doing a good job of it. Just do that. We don't need the pictures and the trolling. Like, don't turn into LeBron James. That's what LeBron does. So, <laughs> so to you, I say, Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur, because you took part in that, man, chill out. I love the way you say, man, chill out. I just want you to know that, hey, we got plenty of Lions discussion, and I want to get into the what the Buckeyes college looked like football. last night. Absolutely. We've got a it big exciting. Co college football weekend ahead as well. Man, uh, MSU right tonight. Here. What's that? MSU's playing tonight. I know. we got plenty to get to. Uh, Who's MSU? MSU? Come on, man! Come on, man! Well, I, I do want to pivot. Good, leave. I do want to pivot and get the Lions in next, though. No, then we'll get no, back in the college football. No, no, no! Football. Stay here, stay here. We I need like, you for the like Sports you pivot Network. Great, oh, man. stop it, Maz! Okay, you thirsty little spin goblins! I want you to pedal into the next dimension. Spin it! Spin! Spin! Uh oh! Carmen's falling behind. Let's give her the hiss of shame. Spin! Spin! Please. Don't ride the bike of shame. Come to Planet Fitness and find your own lane with tons of equipment, free fitness training, and no hissing. Join today for just $10 a month. Hey, everybody, it's Maz. For our good friends at Legacy Partners Insurance, you know the deal. Nobody wants insurance, but we need it, and we depend on them when something bad happens. Look at all the flooding that's going on in New York. Heck, we had it here just about a month ago. That's why you need Legacy Partners Insurance, a local agent that knows the local insurance market. They've been around for over 100 years, so you can trust their reputation and knowledge. The best thing is they're independent, so they get lots of quotes. They make the carriers compete for your business. So give them a call today, 586-209-4105. Better yet, go to the special website just for you, LegacyPartnersINS.com forward slash Woodward Sports, get on there, fill out the info, let Team Maz go to work for you. It's free. You'll save hundreds, maybe thousands a year. Trust me, many, many people have switched over. Legacy Partners Insurance, tell them Ryan, Braylon, and Maz from the bottom line sent you. Even Al May. I got to get that done, Maz, actually. We got we to talk. Yeah, I got to get yeah, with you. I got to get with Bray. Yeah. We got to do that. Yeah. Um, hey guys, I want to pivot to some Lions talk now. And the general manager Brad Holmes and head coach sat at the same day, a same podium yesterday, and spoke to the media. He's a funny guy. And, and you know, just just 
What they said aside, the fact that the general manager and the head coach were sitting there talking to the media alone, when's the last time you have seen that in Detroit other than at an introductory press conference? I think that speaks volumes about the same page that these guys are so on right now, the cohesion that they have together, the ease in which they share the same beliefs about the way the roster is built, who is on it, who is not on it, and what they want to do moving forward. I would be hard-pressed for you to go back and find a time when the head coach and the general manager in season, within a season, were on the same podium at the same time. Yeah, no, you're right. You're 100 correct, especially with the Detroit Lions. Like I actually was trying to think of the Pistons. I was actually trying to think of the Red Wings. I was actually trying to think of the Tigers because it's never happened with the uh, the Detroit Lions. And if they have been on these podium, I couldn't think of one. Yeah, I mean maybe Matt Millen and uh, Mar- uh, what's his name, Martin Mordenweg. The uh, bar is high. Mariucci, but yeah, and, and if you're going back there, it's, it's a losing cause because that's all they were. We'll take the wind. <laughs> but and, I, I, I can't tell you. And the dumbest part about that, if you was and it doesn't look forced, right? Was it taken? I go back to that Chicago game. It's the dumbest, the, the dumbest part about that whole uh, taking the win, when he actually got the holding penalty in overtime to force them to kick a field goal, which would you know was the reason why you took the win. Right. Uh, he he doesn't he blows that call up and they lose the game anyway. Um, guys, uh, I want to play this for you. This is um, the the general manager Brad Holmes talking about Trinity Benson because apparently Trinity Benson is solving all problems. He's our new number one. <laughs> he is. So here's how that all went down. Take a listen. And then with Trinity, <laughs> you know, credit to our director of pro scouting Rob Loman. You know, he comes to me and says, you've seen this Denver receiver. And I said, who? And he said, Trinity Benson. And I had the same response as probably everybody else had. And I said, who the hell is Trinity Benson? But when I first watched the tape, I was like, wow. And he just popped off. He had juice. You know, he had explosiveness. You know, his upside as a route runner gets you really excited for a young guy and then the more work you do from from an intangible standpoint he's a tough kid that's a hard worker he's smart does things the right way so um that's when, kind of when i called george and kind of see if we could get something worked out but credit just to the process because even identifying benson it was still he had to go through a process where he was compared to a lot of other wide receivers across the league and on our own football team so um, it wasn't that. It was just, oh, yeah, he saw some guys that's making plays in a preseason game. No, like, let's see if he truly is, you know, the best fit for us, and we felt that way. You know what I love about this is it just, it just is continuing the authenticity, and it's continuing what the Lions are representing and what they're putting out there with Brad Holmes and with Dan Campbell. They're honest. Mm-hmm. They're honest and they're genuine. Like, you know, it doesn't get any more honest than that. He says, who the hell is Trinity Benson? But then he talks about as he's watched the film, he's like, oh, man, this guy jumps out at you. This guy is explosive. This guy makes plays. Like, it, it's exciting. And he talks about the process that he had to go through to get, you know, to get to be in the, in the running. And now here, like, they're doing a process. Like, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, they want their guys. They want their identity. Like the things that they're building, like this is what they're trying to build. So he's showing you, like we're vetting players. Mm -hmm. Like we really are putting these players through a process to see if they, to see not if they fit where they can play in the NFL or they can play for a Detroit Lions. They are putting players through process to see, can you play for our Detroit Lions? Like I I love this, man. And and I I pray that this stays the same because it's fun. It's invigorating to kind of watch. It's fresh. Sidebar, is there a cooler looking coach in the NFL than Dan Campbell? I mean, I would just love to look like that guy. <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, of course. Only, well, only the Cardinals. What's, uh, what's without, the- without doing the work, of course, but I'd love to look like Dan Campbell. What a beast. That's a man's man. <laughs> Looks I like he drives a Dodge Ram. Dude, that is <laughs> the best. 
that is one of the most dynamite drop-ins you have ever had in your life. We're sitting here trying to have a serious conversation about I honesty, want to look like him. about leadership, and Maz is sitting here. I just want to look like Dan Campbell. Man, he looks good. Uh, is that the greatest thing ever? Dynamite drop-in, money. Hey, dynamite yeah. drop-in there, money. No, I like I, I like the honesty, and, and and you know what? I like the leadership too, in saying that he's comfortable enough without having to. He's comfortable in his own ability enough to not have to take the credit for everything. You know, he could have easily come out here and we would have never known the difference and said, well, you know, I, I identified oh, yeah. Trinity Brad, Benson. Brad as, Holmes made yeah, a good move, et cetera. Right. Yeah. But isn't that funny what we talked about in hour number one about somebody who needs to take all 100%. the credit? Oh, my goodness. It is. Uh, it, it just writes itself. I think the other thing, It too, just writes itself, the even, whole thing. Even diving a little deeper in terms of the authenticity as well as um, the genuineness and the honesty is you listen to him say, like, I didn't even know who the hell he was. Like, most people assume that GMs know every player in the NFL. Right. They know everybody on the practice squad, everybody that was cut, everybody that passed waiver wires, everybody that started, everybody that's second string. Sometimes they don't know. And I think by him making that, yo, like, I didn't know who the hell he was, it shows you, oh, they don't know. Everything they're working as a as a team. They're working as a well-oiled machine. Man. It's a it looks good on the outside so far. What are you laughing at over there? I'm just laughing. I get the comments. Somebody, in. somebody crack you up over there. Of course, there. someone's always on <laughs> on YouTube. All right, guys. Hey, Ohio State won a game last night. Big Ten opener yeah. against Minnesota. Really devastating injury too for the Ibrahim Ooh, uh, running back. Muhammad oh Ibrahim. my gosh! Thirty carries, one sixty-four, and a ruptured Achilles. It was uh, ugly too. And you could see it. Pop yeah, I, too. I feel bad. Uh, you see ugly. him trying to walk off the field like he was going to be all right, and then he just collapsed again. Ugly, ugly, ugly. But uh, the Gophers led that one 14 10 at the half before the Buckeyes ran away with it in the second half. We'll get into that and why you might feel okay about the Buckeyes moving forward this year. Maybe they yeah. will get picked off here at some point. We'll uh, do or college football next. Maybe. And, nah. and, and a big night <laughs> tonight, not. can we say? College football returns. Yesterday in the state was. Of yesterday was I, I don't know if I've been that excited to watch a college game in a very long you time. You mean you're not excited for uh, Michigan State Northwestern? <laughs> save it for the save it for 30 seconds from now. We'll be right oh, back. Woodward Sports sorry. Network. Tony is a third generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust resistant and made for all weather use and the double roll lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Hey, it's Maz for Levels in Centerline. They are open now. Come experience the next level in cannabis. On Sherwood, between nine and 10 miles, download their app today. Start collecting points so you too can level up. Search Enjoy Levels in Apple or Google Play stores and make sure when you stop by Levels today, you mention Woodward Sports sent you. This is like a VIP at a club. Oh, man. here it is. Don't look if it got Ooh. queasy. Oh, oh, oh. Hopefully oh, it is oh, a cramp. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. One thing about if you've ever been injured, uh, like watch, field, watch, man. watch. If you've ever been injured, a severe injury or something of that nature, Whenever you see something like that, like I tore my ACL uh, my rookie year in Cleveland. Whenever I see anything like that, like I, I twins, like my ACL hurts because I, it, it reminds me of oh. how the body looked and how it happened. Man, that's you know, I, uh, prayers up to Muhammad Ibrahim. He was the leading rusher last year in the Big Ten, and he was poisoned. He was having a heck of a game. Man. Yeah, it was gonna be a heck of a season. So that's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough loss for Braylon, the Gophers. Braylon, I I think we hurt Alex's feelings when we talked about Michigan State tonight. They play at Northwestern, nine o'clock kick there at Ryan Field. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out who the quarterback is gonna be. Like I think they should go with Thorne over Russo, and I who. Over who? <laughs> who are these guys? Thorn over Russo. Whatever happened to Rocky Lombardi? Thorn Alex? Where, where's, there, Alex? where's Rocky Lombardi, Alex? Yeah. Rocky Lombardi transferred to Northern Illinois. Oh, so he's there yeah. playing yeah. for the, uh, Huskies. the Huskies. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't you know, realize that. He, you know, Thorn threw last year against Penn State. He had 325 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. I think he looked in a season. 
No, this was just the one game. This was against Penn State. Oh, okay. I, I, I think he looked more like the quarterbacks that, you know, Michigan State is used to. Russo struggled to me. He didn't really look like to fit in the Connor, uh, the Connor Cook, the Kirk Cousins, the Brian Hoare. He didn't look to fit in that um, kind of like that mold. If, if Michigan State wants to get off to a good start, this is a good time to pop a team that's been good. You know, Northwestern won the West last year. Uh, they won the, the Western Division for the Big Ten last year. They've had a string of nine win or more seasons over the past five years under Pat Fitzgerald. They lost a lot of people. They lost Peyton Ramsey last year, uh, this year, the quarterback from Indiana to transfer. They lost Newsom, first round draft pick at cornerback. They lost Patty Fisher, who's been there three years now. I mean, with well, three years, he was a three time captain, two time All American, three time All Big Ten. They lost him, which is kind of like Pat Fitzgerald's clone. This is the time they can, like Michigan State, can start the season off good. They can pop uh, Northwestern in Northwestern, which has been a tough place to play. I asked Michigan State about that, you know, overtime game a couple of years ago. They can get a good win and start their season off. Mel Tucker and his boys, they can get it'd be a good win for them. Alex, you got anything to add to this? I know these are your boys here. Yeah, first I just want to say if anyone watching right now wants to prep themselves for the game, they can head over to woodwardsports.com and read my game preview article. Yes! Oh, you wrote yeah. an article? Yeah, I did, yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I'm actually the our, the Michigan State reporter. I'm going to home games this year. Are you, right, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you writing it right now? Are you, You're not working right now? What are you doing in there? No, I wrote, Alex I wrote, freaking <laughs> Mayer, everybody. Yeah, I wrote it back on Tuesday. But, Braylon, I'm, I'm a little upset with the disrespect. You know, we've been working together for a short amount of time. I just showed you guys love. I said you guys can get a big total win. Total disrespect, I said, I said, Braylon. I said, I said <laughs> Northwestern, the, the cupboard is bare. Like, one thing about Northwestern is they're used to having some type of quarterback that is going to fight to be a first team all Big Ten and you have a running back that is going to beat out the last running back in career yards Terrell Sutton a couple years ago etc you guys can beat them this year actually you're over here yeah you guys can, you guys can beat them this year and I'm saying it can happen I'm saying it's be a good win for you guys moving forward into the season I don't think you guys are that good but this this could change some things can I say this Alex I'm going to give you this and to all anyone that's watching I'd rather have Mel Tucker as my coach in Michigan than Jim Harbaugh. Hey, my man. That's my take. Look, I got a lot of respect for Mel Tucker. I'd rather have I, him. I do. He reminds me of Dan Campbell. He was I, on the coaching staff I, I, when I was in Cleveland. I got, I, a, I got a ton of respect for Mel Tucker. He's going to put them back on the map. He is, but as long as uh, Tony Rizzo is their quarterback. <laughs> I understand Tony that. Tony Rizzo? You know. But let's face Danny it. Danny Badaducci? D'Antonio, <laughs> D'Antonio screwed him. <laughs> Bro, D'Antonio screwed him. D'Antonio walked out on him. He screwed him. He yeah. took him to the top. Is Dr. Then Fauci? he screwed him. Dr. Yeah. Fauci's the quarterback? Dr. Fauci. Fa Tony Rizzo? Okay. Isn't Tony Rizzo the quarterback there? <laughs> I don't know. Or uh, Anthony Russo? John Graziano? <laughs> Anthony Russo? Dan Dan Tony Russo? Rizzo? You guys behave. It's the same thing, isn't it? Behave. Joe Piscopo? This is the disrespect I'm talking about here. Behave. <laughs> Joe Piscopo? You wish you had Mel Tucker as your head coach. Yeah, you did. I do. Uh, look, you're not going to get any argument from me. Mel Tucker... When he was smoking that cigar after beating Michigan yes, last sir. year, and that was like the tweet of all tweets. Yeah. Yeah. Then he what? He lost to Delaware State or something like that? <laughs> but I understand. Yeah, perfect. It's but you want him to be your coach. I do. Yeah, exactly. I do. Three and three, I do. Three, three and nine. <laughs> Typical Michigan State. We went three and nine. Oh, but we beat Michigan, so we had a great season. We Stop went two and, it. two and five, and we beat Northwestern two and, last year, an eighth ranked Braylon. team. They were undefeated two and five. at the time. Who, who cares? And we beat your ass. So. But, what about, oh, the, but what about the other five games? Five games? Uh, Everybody beat our ass last year. What about the other five games? Michigan State's own family show. Michigan State. You just dropped the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> you just dropped the bomb. Michigan yeah. State's owned the decade against Michigan. We yep. can't we can't say anything anymore. Technically, I disagree. Like, shoot. What do you disagree with? They it's, owned it's, us. It's three and three. Who for who who's us? I played in Michigan, not you. It's three and three. <laughs> I don't care if you played for them. Well, if you're gonna say they I can be a us, fan. You you can, but if you're gonna say okay, they owned us, say I us then. I'll say they own Michigan. It's three and you, three. Happier? Last six last six games is three and three. How about the last ten years? Who cares? I'm telling you, what the last you decade. For, what have you done they for me owned lately? you. What have you done for me lately? Whatever. What have you done for me lately? Whatever. Don't call me anymore. Don't call oh, me I'm not. Anymore. You don't pick the phone up. I told you they was pissed. Hey, listen, you. man. You guys are getting me off track. I want to talk about Ohio State. Let, let me let me dive into that. Do, are we going to commercial? No, we, we have got, time. We you got ready? a couple of minutes. Go ahead. So Minnesota played a heck of a game last night, and when I say a heck of a game, like they did everything right. 
everything that they were supposed to do, everything. I'm talking about they won the first down battle. They won the third down battle. They won the time of possession. They made clutch moments. Like, listen to this. Ohio State scores a touchdown and goes up 17-14. Well, guess what? Minnesota scores a touchdown and goes up 17-21. And then they force Ohio State to go three and out. Then they punt. Ohio State scores a touchdown. It's 24-21. Guess what happens? U of M fumbles. The game's over. They fumble. It's a fumble to the crib for Ohio State. The game should be over. It's 31-21. Not so fast. Minnesota comes back. They kick a field goal. They're only down seven now. Ohio State scores a touchdown, 38-24. U of M scores a touchdown. They kept answering the bell, 38-31. The three things that they did wrong in this game. You cannot turn the ball over and expect to win ball games. Now, with that being said, you definitely cannot turn the ball over on Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Alabama, Oklahoma. You can't turn the ball over on it. Two fumbles, one for a touchdown. And then uh, Minnesota, they had a roughing the passer on an interception. On an interception that would have allowed them to go up in the game. You can't beat Ohio State like that. You just cannot. They played a great game. Even with Muhammad Ibrahim going down, the running back still held it down. Tanner Morgan did a great job as a veteran quarterback, three-year starter. They did a great job. It just came up short. You can't have that. But, Ryan, you know what I did see on the Ohio State side is this is my take on Ohio State. Their defense is not that good. Like, they are vulnerable on defense. Like, their defensive line had no sacks. They did not get to Tanner Morgan. And granted, Minnesota has the number one offensive line in the country. I mean, in the uh, Big Ten. They could not get to Tanner Morgan. They could not get sacks. They could not get hurries. They didn't get interceptions. Like, the, se the secondary still got torched to a certain extent. Like, you see, they're very vulnerable. And that was one of their weak points last year was the secondary, the cornerback position. Like, they don't have Denzel Wards anymore. They don't have those players. Very vulnerable in the secondary. Now, on the offensive side, C.J. Stroud reminded me of a J.T. Barrett. Like, you have the number one wide receiver on the country mm -hmm. and Chris Olive, who balled four catches, two touchdowns, 118 yards. Like number Best three, receiver in the country. 100%. 100%. And then the second – and then the, the other receiver really didn't get active, but he will get active. Morris, who's probably the fourth best receiver in the country, he had – 18 completions. Let me get the numbers, make sure I did it right. I want to say he had 294 yards on 18 completions. That's letting you know once he settles in and relaxes and realizes, you know, I don't have to do that much. Mm. I can hand it off to Maya in the backfield, who, by the way, rushed for 130 last night. I can hand off to my other running back. I could dump it off to the best wide receiver in the country. Once he realizes that he ha does not have to do that much, I think he's going to hit a stride. And Ohio State could be undefeated. I think that defense is a cause for concern. I think I want to see that Penn State game against Wisconsin because they do play Penn State and Penn State this year. But if they go undefeated from what I saw last night, and it is early, I don't know if they're the same tier level as Alabama or Georgia and Oklahoma. Like, they'll be an undefeated team, and if they get in, they'll get their butts whooped by those three. I want to stick with some college football talk if I could. I got a, a, just a silly question. It doesn't even matter. It's hard to answer right now, but I want to ask it to you next regarding that. And then we've got a map of the best college game day atmospheres Ooh. out there as well. What is the best atmosphere I got a couple in Michigan, down. in Ohio? You might be surprised. We'll do that next. Fire Armani and Edwards, we got Maz here too. This is Woodward Sports Network. Opa, introducing Papa Romano's new Greek pizza, a tasty blend of bold Greek flavors and Mediterranean toppings, including feta cheese and Greek dressing. Get a large Greek pizza for a limited time for $16.99. Order now at paparomanos.com. Everybody, want to get an advantage on your sports book? Who doesn't, right? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets. BetQL's best bet computer, it scans 350,000 unique bets per year, gives you the best recommendation, then tells you why you should bet that game. 
Head to the App Store right now or Google Play to download BetQL. Get started right now, and if you enter the code WSN at checkout, you can save 25% for any of their subscription offerings. Make sure to check out this special offer in this video description in order to receive a free year of BetQL. Don't miss out on the chance to beat your sports book this season. Why'd you stand up? I, did, I don't know. I, I, I did it look, you guys, did it. I had to stand. I, I've been fighting a good fight all week. <laughs> it's Friday. I've been up since 2, 2, 2, 15, 2 30. Yeah. And, uh, Me too. I stand up yeah, for you. I know. This guy, man, I'll tell you, this guy is, is the best teammate you could ever right. have. That's for sure. He's I might keeping delirious me up. right now. I know, but I'll just tell you, it's whatever. just been a long week, and I can't sit anymore. I had to stand up. And then we play the Mr. Brightside song. That high. was at the big house last night, the big yeah. rally, the killers there. People are ready for college football in Ann Arbor, in East Lansing, in the Big Ten, everywhere in the yeah. country. Saginaw Valley, S- Central, Saginaw Western, Valley, absolutely. everybody's ready. You could not Eastern, go. You Marcus could, Ray on the way. Absolutely. You could not go to a Big Ten college football game last year. So shout out to those students no. in the student section in Ann Arbor. Going to get a chance to be in the crowd tomorrow when Michigan plays a 17-point favorite against Western I'll Michigan tomorrow. I'll meet you there. I'll be there. Hey, my, 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 my silly question is this before I get into Michigan, Michigan State. Okay. And, and everything else. Silly question is, what happens to C.J. Stroud next year when that Ewers kid comes? I, I mean, they're paying him one. They're paying. They're pay, this is some. They're paying the kid one point four million dollars right. to be the Ohio State quarterback next right. year. You think Stroud is going to be the quarterback? Are I, they going to do it with the kid that's making a million bucks? I think it's one of those situations, kind of like University Alabama. You, no, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm switch. I'm gonna switch gears on you. I think it's one of those situations like John Calipari in Kentucky. John Calipari in Kentucky tells his starters every year, hey, just to let you know, just because you start this year, that ain't mean you're going to start next year because mm-hmm. we got this McDonald's guy coming in. We got mm-hmm. that McDonald's guy coming in. So I think Ryan Day has probably had a similar conversation. Like, hey, look, don't worry about yours next year. Worry about yourself right now. Take the team. You, can, you got old State and you got the reign. Do the most you can. Try to go get a Heisman. Try to take us to the national championship. Because he's playing anyway next year, so do the best you can. An embarrassment of riches there in Columbus. Uh, they got so many, so much talent. They don't even know what to do with it. Can't give it, get it all on the field. Can we borrow some? <laughs> Put <laughs> right. it on so, 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 Maz, you're going to be there. Shout out to Mark Fellauer from Absolutely. the Drew and Mike show. I got to pick him up bright and early tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh-oh. Absolutely. So you're going to the Michigan game tomorrow. You? No, you're not. My brother plays uh, sac- the Cardinals. Uh, That's right, State, so you're so going there tomorrow. I'm, and they have a night game tomorrow, so I'll um, be up there. I, look, just uh, quickly. Shout quick, out to Bailey Edwards, man. Good luck. Shout out to Bailey Edwards. Okay, Absolutely. Um, quick quick thought. I mean, I don't think we need to get too in-depth on Michigan right now over Western Michigan. We're going to react to it on Tuesday when we yeah, get back. But I, the man. I, I expect them to win the game by three touchdowns. If nothing else, I expect them to win comfortably. I am high on Michigan this year, and that might mean that I am high, uh, but it is what it is. I, yeah. I don't know what else to say about it. I am I am an embarrassment to the fan base because I think it's going to be great every year. And until they prove me, maybe 12 hours from now, 24 hours from yeah. now, I have a completely different assessment of where the Michigan Wolverine football team is going to be. But where I stand right now, I think we're going to win I say we. I think, yeah, it, it is I, we. I, I, think, was, I was all the best with a match. I think we are going to win 10 plus games this year. 10 plus. Take the points. So, you know, I. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, I know, right? I just got to just cut you off. Take up. the points. I agree, with, I agree with you. I think, you know, they're 17 uh, point favorite for a reason. Um, go, out, go out and show proof. I just saw the motivational video by Maze and Brew yesterday in which they were talking about motivation and they had your mug and my mug talking about we have it bowl wins etc put it up so you don't have to put up yeah okay, or maybe, you don't or put underneath it up. maybe you can yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah. we don't need to hear fine. it go ahead 
and they had our mugs. If we need to be, if telling the truth is motivation, then I'm fine by doing that. Like, if I'm motivating Michigan to go out there and prove themselves to get better, this is what I need to see from Michigan. Everybody's been talking about last year, two and five, whatever it is. Two and four. Two and four and last year. You know, and then they're talking about you guys backed out of the Ohio State game, take it for what it is, COVID or not, et cetera. You talk about the last couple years. Like, use this as motivation. Like, if you guys aren't ready to come out and play, after what everybody has been saying, some of it true, some of it a little bit extra piled on. If you guys aren't ready to come out, if you're not ready at home against a team you're favored to beat by 17 and hit them in the mouth, you guys got an experienced team on offensive line. You got an ex- a quarterback that you guys want. You got a running back. Like, look at this video. And, like, and Braylon, this especially, needs to be you. And again, especially you're saying all this stuff, and as you're saying it, I'm thinking to myself, especially you, they're not dumb. They're not totally isolated. They hear all the whispers. They hear the chatter about their head coach doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. Michigan's just totally uh, fallen off the college football map. Oh, we were great 50 years ago and 100 years ago and 25 years ago, 20 years ago. But now Michigan is no good. It's been 20 years. I mean, so so if these guys can't come out tomorrow I know that guy. after all the whispers yeah. and just pound Western Michigan, then I got a hard time believing even they could beat Wisconsin, Penn State, Indiana, Michigan State, exactly. Ohio State. So, exactly. I mean, they got a lot to prove tomorrow. And at the end of the day, you, you see – okay, I'll give you an example. I'll switch it. I'll, I'll pull a Max Kellerman, and I'll relate it to boxing. You saw what happened with Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. In the first fight, Tyson Fury should have won it. And in the second fight, Tyson Fury embarrassed Deontay Wilder. He knocked him out, knocked him down twice, knocked him out. He tried to blame it on his heavy suit he wore to the ring. He got dropped. That is fact. We saw him get dropped. We saw that. So if I was to say, hey, man, you got dropped. What you going to do now? You saw yourself get dropped. You heard people telling the facts about how you got dropped. Now what do you do? Do you get in shape? Do you go in the gym? Like, do you bring it up? Do you use it as motivation? That's what Michigan needs to be doing. You guys got hit in the mouth last year. Mm -hmm. You've been getting hit in the mouth. And that's all now over. You talked about positivity and zero and zero. Right now we're zero and zero. What are you guys going to show? Tomorrow against Western, you have a great chance to come out and unload on, everything that people have been saying. Unload on them. Come on, unload man. on hey, Western that's, Michigan. Come on, that's awesome, baby. man. Unload on. That's come awesome. On, Are you excited? It's easy. Are you unload ready? On. Let's go. Hey, unload, unload, unload on. That said, take the points. <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. And plus seven. Seriously, dude. <laughs> Seventeen. Give me the seven. college football map, Alex. Here we go. This <laughs> is the. I'm hyped. I am <laughs> ready to go, to do, man. Uh, some pregame speaking. M- map of the best college game. No, you're not allowed to talk to the players. Bro. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> map of the best college game day atmospheres uh, in Michigan. Okay, obviously, if you're watching on Twitter, on YouTube, wherever you're watching it, you see that Michigan is the best college football atmosphere on game day in the state of Michigan. But look at Ohio. I am shocked by this. In Ohio, the best college football at- atmosphere who they the hell, say who the hell made is this? Cincinnati. Who the hell made this? Maz, I got it on the sheet, man. This is this. First of all, at Big Game Boomer, first on of, Twitter. First of all, Ohio State is one of the best venues slash tailgate slash atmospheres in the country. Like I hate them, but I'm also it's hard to argue. Thank you, Cincinnati and Luke Fickle. I mean, congrats to you guys. I didn't even think Michigan was going to be number one. To be honest, I thought it'd been Central. Central's a good atmosphere. I used Fire to work up chips. Uh, yeah, I used to work in Cadillac, Michigan. Yeah. We used to cover the chips. What do they do? What do they do so special out there? Central, it's nuts, man. It's a party town, man. It like, is. It's, it's good. A, it's a party. It's a great atmosphere. Like my brother, both of them played at Central. Like it's. Central's uh, it's fun. It's a good it's a, go it's fire up chips, time. baby. Uh, yeah. Guys, we got some videos of the day. You're gonna want to stick around for that. And uh, we gotta be active about on some, that. We gotta be active. How about now. some? How about some predictions? Prediction pain Michigan, for Michigan State and uh, Michigan tomorrow. Even though Tony Rizzo is—is uh, is he going to get the start? No, Tony Rizzo ain't going to get the start. It's going to be Peyton <laughs> Thorn. John, John Damato. A- Alex, trust me, you'll have your say. Lately, 
Michigan has been talking before the game, and then Michigan yeah. State talks after the game. That's just how Pretty it's much. been working for <laughs> us lately. Much. So at least I understand my limitations. We'll be right back. I can't wait. What do you want to say, man? Paul, Paul Bunyan list. lost his way to Ann Arbor, by the way. Yeah, he got lost. He, yeah. he, he was following that map to Cincinnati. He needs yeah. map quest. You know, <laughs> I've never picked, you know I've never picked up Paul Bunyan? Really? I've never lost to, uh, never lost to Michigan State. I've never picked up Paul Bunyan. I'll bring you my Paul Bunyan trophy. <laughs> Even in. after the triple overtime game, I, I didn't touch him. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? Uh, all right. We'll be right back. Ronnie and Edwards, Woodward Sports Network. Tony is a third-generation logger that has a simple, practical approach to life and work. That's why his Coast DX342 knife is perfect for him. The stainless steel blade is rust-resistant and made for all-weather use. And the double roll-lock safety ensures that it will never inadvertently close when he doesn't want it to. That's why Coast is trusted tough. Papa Romano's handcrafts pizza that have made them a Detroit favorite for over 50 years. And I'm not lying. I'm talking about when I was in high school, every Friday, Blockbuster, Papa Romano's, and don't sleep on those wings. Uh, House-made <laughs> dough, handcuffed veggies, and fresh cheese make the difference. The same quality goes into all their pizzas. I'm telling you, the little Bambino, the Bambino bread, I'm getting hungry right now. Uh, salad, subs, and pitas, pin goes that way. Order now at PopperMonos.com. If you don't, I will. I think Braylon Edwards. Well, I think that's it. That where he's been in his past as a player with, with uh, Coach Alvey, uh, being around Nick Saban, being around Kirby Smart, it, there's, it's, it's his way or the highway. Uh, and, and I think he got some, uh, some success early as a head coach in, out in Boulder, and I think that allows him to have confidence in what he's doing and, what, and how it needs to be done. He's been around incredible blueprints of how to run a program. And I think that also gives him, as you say, swagger. So if players are not going to fall in line and, and do things that he's recommending, it's, it's you know, you either buy into my culture or you get out of here, you know? And I, and I, I find that refreshing uh, that he's not going to bend for guys. And if, if they don't like it, it's it's my way of the highway. So give him some time. This, this program was down uh, when he got there and, and it's going to take a little bit of time to do it the right way. You can try to do a quick fix, um, I don't think that always has staying power. So I, I like to see guys, you know, build it back up the right way. And, and I think fans sometimes need to, as hard as it is, uh, be patient. If you're seeing signs of things you like, then don't count the wins and losses. Just count the, the style in which they're playing. And, I, and I, I'm a big fan of Mel's. All right, so that's Kirk Curb Street talking to Channel 7's Brad Galley, and that video was courtesy of Brad Galley and Channel 7. Want to give them all the credit got in the world. a great story about Brad Galley. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he actually started. The first time he had a gig in terms of doing interviewing was on a, uh, the red carpet uh, at one of my events, 2009. Oh, oh really? 2009 at the uh, the Whitney Building downtown. Look at that. His first his first gig. Shout out to that match. You said you had something. Congratulations. You, you want to raise your hand for some? No, okay. Uh, guys, uh, so uh, obviously Mel Tucker getting a lot of love. I don't think it, it, it's undeniable Mel Tucker, Tucker is going to succeed at Michigan yeah, State. Is. The only question is how long is it going to take him? Uh, and again, if you want a game preview, check out Alex Mayer. Go to woodwardsports.com and check out Alex Mayer's game preview. He's our Michigan State beat writer this year. He'll be at all the home games this year so we're really excited about his coverage here and he's gonna really at least for me provide some insight because i couldn't care less about the michigan state spartans so Talk I, <laughs> I definitely i definitely could care less about i definitely could care less about them in terms of the school but Alex, uh, you know I'm but, with but mel you, tucker man. was on the coaching staff when i was in cleveland he was a defensive bass uh, coach and after he left cleveland he went down to ohio state uh, and then he journeyed to georgia then he journeyed to boulder so he's been around like he knows his stuff he's been around some great minds and he's a good coach in, in himself had success uh, at Boulder. That's why they brought him here to Michigan State. So I think he is going to turn that program around. I'm excited to uh, to see him. He's very relaxed. He's very chill. Doesn't get he doesn't get bogged down in in the bad moments. If that makes sense. Like he's not going to be a guy where it's like something bad happens and you see him get sheepish. Like he's a fiery guy and you know his his wherewithal will last the test of time up there. It's going to be great. College football is back. But did you guys check it out? There was a little something on, on Twitter today that I found, and it's the New Orleans Saints, as everyone knows. Jameis. They've got to go on the road for their home opener against the Packers because of uh, Hurricane. Check this out. If this is true, 
it's pretty cool. And Ryan, I'll let you read it. No, if this is true, this is awesome. So apparently the Saints chose to play their game in Jacksonville for the opener because it was the most expensive trip for Packers fans to take. Huh? You know, they didn't want to go play in Baton Rouge. They didn't want to go play in Houston. Yeah. They didn't want to go play in any of the surrounding major cities around New Orleans because Packer fans just flood those areas. Hey, let's go No to pun Duval. intended. But uh, Jacksonville, it's a really hard trip for Green Bay fans to take. So that would be the ultimate you know, that's pretty cool. Jab right. at Packers you, fans. You, you know what that means? You know what's going to happen? Aaron Rodgers is going to throw 500 yards and six <laughs> touchdowns. He, he's he's going to destroy. And so is Saints. Jameis Winston going to throw four touchdowns in that game? We'll talk about that. He'll throw next four week. touchdowns the the whole season. Well, I'd throw a little down on. Uh, well, I wouldn't personally. I would not. Trust me, I wouldn't. But. Uh, Jameis Winston for MVP, I don't think is... Oh, God. Uh, uh, what is wrong with you? What, what, is, man. what is in that cup down there? Hey, guys, I want to tell you that down also down? that Woodward Sports is the Friday Night Clash. We Ooh, are the tonight. home of the Friday Night Clash. Every Friday, we broadcast one of the best high school football games in the state. We do so on Woodward Sports Facebook, Woodward Sports YouTube, and Woodward Sports Twitter. We do that at 9 o'clock. Tonight's game, Birmingham Groves hosting Southfield a and T. So look for that on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just search Woodward Sports on those three platforms, and that is going to be an exciting watch. Yesterday, after the show, a friend of mine, Max, we went to his godson's game. His godson plays on Orchard Lake St. Mary's JV team. First time I've been to a high school game of any sorts in years. And I think these fans were excited because the first time they were actually able to, to be in person in a year. Man, it's nothing like that that, no. that high school atmosphere. I'm talking about nachos. We got to get you out to a De La Salle game this year. No, I'm not going to see the Pirates. Gross Point South. <laughs> oh, or Gross Point South. Will I'll Johnson. Do, I, okay, I'll do that. I'll do <laughs> Will that. Johnson. I'll do that. I'm not number going one to You'll see Ryan's state. number. It's, uh, it's, it's up in the rafters. Well, Ryan's well, number. that ain't there yet, but it, uh, it's, uh, it should be. With it a microphone next to it. <laughs> it should be. Uh, guys, bottom line, so videos of the day. Quickly, let me show you some New York, uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> What's going on here, man? <laughs> people, Come on, man. Are, people are stupid. <laughs> That's what, and Including Ryan Literally. right now. Anyway, <laughs> look what people are doing in this bad weather. <laughs> Let's take you out to New York on your way to Pennsylvania and that Ben Franklin Bridge. Look at this dummy. What a dummy. What oh, idiot. yeah. Look at this guy. He's jumping in sewage. Oh, my God. He's jumping in sewage on a highway. And if you remember, a couple, uh, about a month ago, a people, were doing, in there. people were doing that on, on I-94. <laughs> Did you see him in the 96? What a they dummy. They were doing that as well. What so a dummy. Let's take you now to Hurricane Ida in New Orleans. Okay? Just look how high that water is, though. That's oh, a 22, that is gross. That's a 22-foot clearance. Poop water. Look at this. Hurricane yeah. Ida in New Orleans. Check out what this resident decided to do during the hurricane. What's he doing? He's chilling. He's chilling between buildings in an alley. It's like the lazy river when you go to water park. What's wrong with these Look, people? Listen to this thunder and lightning. Oh, he's smoking a hoop. That's what I was thinking. It's like, a, it's like a Michigan thing. You know what I'm noticing about society today, especially as it relates They're to stupid. going viral and putting things and posting things. Society today, if it's if it can be done, if it's dumb, if it doesn't make sense, people are gonna do if it. If it'll get you a like, if it'll get people to hit the like button, yeah. they'll do it. All hey, right, I bet if I jump in this water right now, just record this real quick. We'll go viral. Yeah, in poop water, you get a lot of views. Uh, there is no sound on this next. Well, there is, but I pulled it down because it's cursing. Oh, uh, we don't want the, you cursing. Don't need the cursing. It's a family show. Yeah, yeah but man. look how dumb this guy is jumping on a trampoline. Is he dumber than the other guy? Wait yeah, check this see out. what this guy does. Look, uh, yeah, it's look like, the trampoline cover is gone. It's like backyard wrestling. He's Ooh. jumping onto onto metal. What? Luke Harper? Look, why is he doing piece? that? Because he's an idiot. Is this ECW? ECW? Oh, yeah. ECW? Oh! No, wait. Oh! Look, his hair is stuck. Oh! His hair is stuck. He thinks he's the what hardcore is, legend it, Mick Foley. Hold on, hold on. What's, what's going on with the trampoline makeup? Is that barbed wire? It's it barbed is. wire. What I, the? I, I, 
I don't even know where to begin on asking this question. Dude, what, he, what thinks, is this? he thinks he's Mick Foley, Look the hardcore him. legend. He definitely looks like Al Snow or Mick Foley. That's, that is just that is ridiculous. I rest my case. People are dumb. All right. Get, That's ridiculous. Uh, Maz, you're first up here. Give me Michigan State and Michigan. What do you see this weekend? Michigan State's going to beat Northwestern tonight, 24-21. Yes. Michigan is going to beat Western Michigan tomorrow, 31-20. to They won't cover. Braylon? Uh, 20 years ago, we played Western Michigan University my sophomore year, and I had two touchdowns, count them, two touchdowns, and did my first post-game interview with Jennifer Hammond. Uh, final score of that game was 38. Shout out to Hammer. Shout out to Hammer. Uh, final score of that game was 38 to 21. And what's the spread? 17. I'm going with the same exact score, 38 to 21. The Michigan State Northwestern game, I'm looking at you over here, buddy. You know what I got in this game? I got Michigan State oh, let's go. 35. I got Northwestern 10. All right. Look at you. Oh. Big win on the way. 35-10. Here we go. I'm out of the predicting business, but if I were in it, I would tell you that Northwestern will beat Michigan State 9-7 no. to tonight. 9-7. No, nine nine to seven. Seven. Real is this, ugly. Is this 1930? Real ugly. And Michigan is going to beat Western Michigan tomorrow 42-10. to 10. Oh. Uh, that's like what I'm it. saying. 42-10. Michigan 9-7 Northwestern over Michigan State. Guys, thanks so much for you watching us. You made it through, man. This week. We did it, guys. You powered through. Enjoy your weekend. It is Labor Day. Enjoy Happy your weekend Labor, out you guys, there. Hopefully man. you got some uh, great rest and relaxation, Braylon. Right. And, uh, hey, share this with a friend. If you're going up north later today, uh, give us a watch. Give us a listen. Whatever the case may be. If you're yeah. going to Arts, Beats, and Eats, nope. say hello. You know? Hey, I tell you like this, man. I love you. Next time that you have to work 4 a.m. to 9 and this, you can kiss my butt. I'm not getting up. <laughs> I'm not staying up and watching you. It's a one-time deal, buddy. I love you, it's man. It's a one-time deal. I love you so much. Happy Labor Day to everybody. For Fish, Alex, Maz, Braylon, I'm Ryan. Everybody at Woodward Sports Network. So long. We got to stand up more often, man. It's kind of, I just got to get a taller mic. Brad, you said um, that you're going to be adding more to this team. There's going to be more additions down the line. Now, this is a fairly young team right now. Is there going to be more going towards that youth movement, or are there some veterans out there that you have your eye on? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's hard to predict the future. We like where we're at right now, but because we can't predict the future, um, we just got to see how things shake out, you know, um, in a, a lot of different areas. But There'll be roster movement. I mean, that's just the life of the NFL. But, um, you know, with the youth movement, you know, we didn't set out to – we didn't set out and say, hey, Dan and I were like, man, we got to get young. Like, we got to be young. Like, let's, let's find the youngest. These young guys just happened to perform very well, and they were part of the best 53 players that, you know, that, that we decided on for the football team. But with the additions, we're not going to add and say, man, he's better be young. He better be young. You know, if it's a veteran player that's – a better fit, and he's the best guy, he's the best fit for us, then that's, that's where we'll go.